Oh, hi, everyone. Welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. My name's Ethan Van Skyver, 27-year veteran of the comic book industry, world's most charming, elegant, eloquent, and yet humble man. Great big Star Wars fan. Trusted member of the media. It's great to see you guys here. What an eventful day we've got. What a huge day, everyone. What a huge day. We're going to have a good time tonight. Uh, we're going to talk about all things comics, gay, redline fiction. Here he says, evening, Ethan. Good evening to you. Uh, yeah, smoke them if you got them, says Blackwater Reveries. Skits Comics is here. Hello, Skits. El Largo 30. All of my favorite people here. All of my favorite people are joining uh, the show tonight uh, as we examine the firmament. The firmament of Comicsgate, uh, of which I am uh, but a humble human sunbeam. Uh, hello, Adrian Blom. Hello, Mike TV. Hello, uh, Mikiel K74. Welcome. You're a new name. I haven't noticed you before. Uh, very, very great. Or it could be Mice Al K. Mice Al K74. Not really sure. Uh, but yeah, it's great to have you guys. Absolutely great to see you. Uh, I'll tell you, I got a uh, got a lot to talk about. Got a lot going on. Uh, and and I'm telling you, uh, most of it's good. Mostly what we have today is good news. Look at this beard hair. You guys notice that? This is the problem. Yeah, uh, the main problem with what's going on uh, with the uh, pandemic and all of us being stuck inside is that I can't get a haircut. That's the main problem. Yes, yeah, some people are dying. Some people aren't feeling so well. Uh, business is collapsing everywhere, but I can't get a haircut. I can't look as dazzling for you guys as I want to look because of things that are not my fault. My grooming is usually immaculate, uh, but look at us. Uh, <laughs> watermelon platypus, God cut your hair. See, that's the kind of dad joke that we need more of here. Uh, that's definitely uh, uh, that's definitely good. Uh, hail, hail everyone, hail Comicscape. Uh, okay, so what's going on today? We got a bunch of things before we get started uh, and get into the weeds too much here. Let's just look at uh, the campaigns because I, you know, frankly, I just woke up a little while ago here. I took a nap. Not a nap. I actually sleep during, uh, I sleep in the afternoon, uh, you know, so I can work at nights. Uh, Cecil's cash grab, uh, checking in on Cecil here as he uh, doesn't move at all. <clears throat> 163900 Cecil, am I the only one that's promoting your book? Uh, what's going on? By the way, I listened to myself uh, and I realized that I pronounce his name. If you were to spell out his name that I, I when I say it phonetically, it would be uh, S E A C, uh, and then S O U L C Soul, C Soul. I was like, why do I talk like that? I guess that's Jersey. Uh, Fragaboom's Black Flag Pineapple Perception, on the other hand, uh, Dan's out there working it. Uh, he's got eighty-seven thousand eight hundred eighty-eight dollars. He's this close to ninety thousand. We want Dan uh, to get a little attention here. Uh, and push him, uh, push him to six figures by next week. That's my goal for Dan. I want to see Dan get to six figures, young lady. It's seven figures. Uh, you guys know this already. Six figures, young lady. We want to be uh, polite. We want to, you know, we want to be kind. We want to be chivalrous. But it's seven figures. It's seven figures, bitch. And very few people uh, have gotten to seven figures, bitch. Very few people. We do want everyone here eventually to be able to get to seven figures, bitch. That's the growth of Comics Gate. Vestige number one. Uh, wow, these guys are actually moving, and I'm I'm glad that they are. One of the reasons why uh, one of the reasons why Vestige is doing so well right now uh, is because they're actually they're shipping. Uh, and I uh, took a moment to read Vestige number one. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, I'm going to talk about that tonight too. Uh, Vestige number one. Great book. Great book. I'll give you my review. Uh, Xenotype Volume 1, Evolve or Die. This is uh, Liam Gray, uh, who is making demands of all of us. Uh, I refuse to evolve. I'm going to stay right here as a uh, uh, caveman, if he doesn't mind. And I want to live, damn it, Liam. I want to live. Uh, $46,135 for Liam Gray uh, with his book Xenotype, which is now in demand. Make sure that you check that out. Uh, Cyberfrog 2 Wrecked Planet. Thank you guys for backing this uh, comic to this degree, to this extent. Uh, this is big. We're about to hit 690,000. And then from there, it is, from there, uh, it is 700,000. And once we get to 700,000, I'm adding a very special perk to everyone's orders. You know, one of the things about uh, crowdfunding is that you take a little bit of grief 
uh, for uh, how much these comics cost. It's like, uh, give me $25, please, for this 48-page comic book. Now, it is signed. I you know, understand that no matter what, you know, all of my comic books are signed. You're going to get my autograph in there. And that's something. That's that's special. Uh, but $25 for a 48-page book is a lot. It really is. Uh, the thing about crowdfunding, though, is that you're giving me $25 uh, to invest in, uh, in creating this book. And over time, as the campaign continues to succeed gloriously, which this one... This one in particular has. Uh, then I start to add perks and bonuses to your uh, investment. $25 uh, is a lot for a single book, but let's make the uh, cover chromium. Let's give it a beautiful chromium shiny cover. Everybody loves chromium covers, by the way. A lot of people are imitating or want to imitate chromium covers. Uh, so far, Cyberfrog uh, Blood Honey is the only one to actually do it. Uh, but we're doing it five times. There are five covers on this book, and they're all going to be chromium. This is the J. Lee Wrecked Planet uh, variant uh, that you're looking at on your screen right now. Uh, this is going to be chromium. So uh, now let's add another book. Let's get E.J. Moore just to do an extra book called Cyberfrog Heartsick Horror that tells the story of Cyberfrog's uh, horrible detachment from Chelsea, his mother, uh, how that makes him feel, and um, how that wipes away any uh, ideas that he has uh, about whether uh, whether he should kill, uh, you know that's that has now gone out the window. <laughs> Cyberfrog, Cyberfrog detached from Chelsea is a whole different creature. Uh, that's heart sick horror. You're going to get two comic books now for twenty five dollars. On top of that, I'm going to include two trading cards, two trading cards, and three extra trading cards that are chromium trading cards. One of Cyberfrog, one of Heather Swain, one of Salamandroid. You're going to get that. Uh, and then I'm going to also give you uh, two gigantic die-cut dazzling stickers, one of Cyberfrog and one of Salamandroid. And when I say giant, they're going to be like this big. They're going to be the size of a comic book. Now, if we get to 700,000, which uh, I feel good about right now, I'm going to be honest with you. You know, I don't want to count my chickens before they're hatched. I don't want to count my red roosters before they're hatched. Uh, but I will say I'm feeling pretty good about 700000 right now. And when we get to $700,000, well, uh, at that point, at that point, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give everyone who backs, everyone who backs at any level, a Cyberfrog keychain. Uh, and here's what it looks like. Here's what I'm hoping it looks like. Uh, this is going to be the keychain. It's going to be a PVC, I think, or it's going to be metal. One of the two. I don't know if it's going to be a small silver pewter uh, keychain that looks like this, uh, or hopefully it'll be a, a you know a, a kind of a silicon PVC uh, with a couple of paint steps. I got to figure out what's possible and what looks the best. Uh, but this is going to be included in everybody's order at seven hundred thousand. It's looking better now. It's looking better. Your $25 investment is looking much, much, much better right now. And that's what a successful Indiegogo campaign can actually provide people. Imagine this hanging. Imagine this dangling from your keys as you're driving uh, your Jeep Cherokee uh, to that uh, Indio, uh, India, Indy, Indy girls. What's that? Indigo girls. <laughs> Why couldn't I remember? Look, four non-blondes. Imagine uh, this keychain dangling from your uh, from your keys. As you drive your Jeep Cherokee uh, to the Four Non Blondes concert, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be fantastic. You're gonna be so glad. You're gonna be so glad that you backed Cyberfrog uh, Wreck Planet. Uh, you're gonna be very very glad that you did. Uh, and thank you and thank you guys for that. So many of you have backed it. So many of you have. And if you haven't yet, make sure that you do. Still, here's the great thing: now, these people are early birds. They had faith. They had faith in the campaign. They backed early when they were only going to get a comic book. But these people have blazed a trail for you. Uh, they've, they've blazed a trail. Everyone who backs Cyberfrog Erect Planet now is getting everything that everyone else worked for. Uh, you, you guys you guys who backed the $25 comic now, today, you're getting all of this. You're getting the extra comic. You're getting the two gigantic Dazzler stickers. You're getting all of the trading cards. You're getting the chromium cover. You're getting the signature because of the work of your forefathers. You get to stand on the shoulders uh, of these brave giants and receive <laughs> and receive all the benefits thereof. Uh, God bless. God bless these brave trailblazers that made this possible for you. And then you uh, can actually take credit for pushing Cyberfrog Wreck Planet over that $700,000 line. Uh, you can say 
you're welcome. Uh, to everybody who receives a cyber fraud keychain, you're partially responsible for that. Uh, and uh, thank you. Thank you so very, very much. Now, we're selling a lot of executive honeycomb box sets, as you can see. Uh, 1,629 out of 2,500 claimed with just eh, a little less than two weeks to go, guys. Um, feeling uh, feeling like we're going to have enough of these. I think we'll, we might sell out. Eventually, we will sell out. Uh, but uh, we've got we've got less than 900 of them left. So don't wait too long. Uh, these do sell every single day. They're a big hit. Now, what is the Executive Honeycomb box set? The Executive Honeycomb box set is a subscription to this campaign. Uh, you buy the Executive Honeycomb box set, you're going to receive every single item except for one, except for the Ides of March 24-hour variant. Sorry, we made rules about that. Uh, you had to be there on the first day to get one of those. But every other thing that uh, this campaign offers, and then some, you will receive in your Executive Honeycomb box set. You're going to be receiving all four commercially available... No, wait, hold on. One, two, three. No, all three commercially available variant covers. The J. Lee variant cover, you're going to be receiving... Uh, let me see. Let me scroll down here. And how come I can't look at this right now? Read more. Read more. You're going to be receiving this. This is the Our Friends uh, variant cover. You're going to be, no, Our Heroes variant cover. You're going to be receiving this Chromium. This is going to be Chromium. You're going to be receiving the Villainous Scum Chromium variant. Uh, that's three variants of Wrecked Planet, but you're going to be receiving an exclusive variant that you can only get. And I'm sorry, I'm going to stick to this. You can only get this variant cover with the Executive Honeycomb box set. Uh, and that is the Heather Swain I Spit on Your Hive variant cover. It's a booty shot. Sorry. I respect Woman. I do. I especially respect Heather Swain. I respect her fury and rage uh, at the Vespus Vulgarix uh, invasion that took. Well, you'll see. You will see. I spit on your hive, the Heather Swain uh, variant, as Heather Swain approaches one of the Vespus hives with a bloody hatchet, taking revenge, coming to take revenge. One woman and a hatchet taking revenge uh, on the, uh, the alien species that cost her. Uh, something that she was not prepared to give. And uh, that is uh, that is only going to be in the Executive Honeycomb box set. What else? Uh, also, there's going to be a calendar, uh, an exclusive CyberFrog wall calendar that's only available in the Executive Honeycomb uh, set box set. Uh, you'll be receiving four total CyberFrog variant covers. You will be receiving... Oh, another thing that's exclusive. You will be receiving a gold foil, ultimate blood honey, special edition. Uh, this is going to be a magnificent thing. It's gold foil embossed. It's going to contain, it's 80, 88 pages long as it turns out. Uh, it's going to contain uh, Cyberfrog Blood Honey, and it's going to contain The Diary of Heather Swain all in one book. For the first time, uh, 1998, The Diary of Heather Swain is going to be blown up full size. Uh, it's going to be regular comic book size. Uh, so uh, you're going to get that in one box and nobody else is. That's only going to be available. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sticking to this. A lot of people are going to say, well, is there any way that we could, uh, is there any way, uh, could you? No, I can't. I can't do it. We're only going to be including those uh, in the Honeycomb box sets. Uh, you're going to get a copy of Salamandroid Death Sting. You're going to be getting a copy of Amphibionics number two, which Kyle Ritter is working on the cover for right now. Uh, you are going to be getting, what else? I feel like there's stuff that I'm leaving out, and I always do that. But uh, in any case, you're going to be getting a lot of stuff. We're going to stuff your box with stuff. We're going to stuff your box with books. Uh, this is Cyberfrog uh, 2, Wreck Planet. Make sure to back it. Make sure to get your copy, and let's push this thing to 700,000. I believe in you. I believe in us. Cyberfrog Unforgettable Tales is the other one. Uh, it, what a great book. What a great campaign. This is still moving every single day. Uh, two uh, foil embossed. Uh, covered reprints of Cyberfrog 1 and Cyberfrog 2 from Hall of Heroes, colored by Kyle Ritter, uh, re-lettered uh, by the exquisitely handsome uh, debonair uh, Eric Weathers. This is what it looks like. This is what a page looks like now with Eric Weathers' letters on it. Uh, this is great. I love that he put the Cyberfrog logo in here. I think I just used scratch-off letters before. I'm Cyberfrog, Dark Crusader, Avenging Amphibian, Croaking Crime Fighter. You know, a little corny there, uh, EVS. But, you know, what are you going to do? You're 19 years old. You know, you're doing a comic book. These colors are absolutely beautiful. Uh, Kyle Ritter is amazing. Uh, he has finished now. He's officially finished all of Cyberfrog Unforgettable Tales. Uh, he's done coloring everything. I sent him over a new ad page that I found. I found this kind of antique-ish 
uh, advertising page from all the heroes. And I asked him to color that too. We'll put that in there for fun. Uh, he said, okay, that, this looks great. Kyle always says everything I do look, looks beautiful. He's like, this looks beautiful. I can't wait to color this. That that's why he gets paid the big bucks. I appreciate him. Now <clears throat> let's uh, take a moment to look each other in the eye. Uh, hi everyone. Hello. Uh, Paltrow's head is not, no, Gwen, Gwyneth Paltrow's head is not in the honeycomb box. I could, I could look into it, but I no no promises on that. Chris Farcell says I backed both uh, the Ides of March and the Honeycomb box. Are they going to be shipped together or uh, to me or shipped separately? They will be shipped to you separately, Christopher. They will be shipped to you separately. Uh, the Honeycomb box is coming in a pr uh, priority mailbox with foam peanuts. It's a separate item. Uh, we're going to be seeing that soon. We're going to be seeing a prototype of that box very very soon. Uh, oh, maybe I can show you that. Let me see if I can find. Uh, the uh the layout for that because i had to change it a little bit i had to change it a little bit for you guys uh just because of uh you know uh we made it we made another decision uh let me see here yeah 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 okay um download this i guess all right there we go that's right there uh yeah we had to make another decision and that decision was uh uh, based on what you guys were telling me, your feedback, you were saying, you know, Ethan, uh, we uh, we really are kind of expecting a blood honey box as well. We want we want to put these things on our shelves, uh, and so uh, why would we just have a wreck planet box uh, when we could have uh, a blood honey box too? Uh, and I said, uh, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right about that. So uh, we went back, and I did add uh, this label on here. Okay, so now uh, the honeycomb box. This is the outer shell. Uh, we'll say wrecked planet on it. Cyber. And by the way, these colors, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with these colors yet, but this is not quite right. Maybe this will be red. Maybe this will be green. Uh, I'm not sure, but this is the, the rough layout for the, you know, for the box now. So when this goes on your shelf, it'll say cyber frog wrecked planet. Uh, we're going to do another one that says cyber frog blood honey with a different design on it. Uh, and then ever thus moving forward, we'll keep doing, you know, we'll keep doing this. I listen to you guys. What are you going to do? Uh, you know, you guys are the ones that make the rules around here. I listen to you. Uh, let's see. Peter Armstrong says, thank you for sending out my Sal sketch cover. Looking forward to getting that beauty. Well, it looks like uh, Andrea must have uh, sent you a little uh, little notification about that. <laughs> I had a hundred of those to do. Uh, and I, I stay up all night and I work on those. They take a long time to do. Salamandroid's tougher to draw than Cyberfrog. Uh, and then every day I wake up, uh, get down to my office, and there's an empty box in it with a little slip of paper, and Andrea is writing. It just says, uh, "Need twelve more, <laughs> twelve more." So I think I've, I have twelve more to go, and uh, and we're done with the uh, Salamandroid head sketches. Uh, Lrgo thirty says, "Have we reached the goal for Kyle to get a bonus?" I have not established that goal yet. I have not established a Kyle Ritter uh, goal a bonus yet, or a cyber. Wait, have not established a Kyle Ritter bonus goal yet but that's a good idea i think we should do another one of those even though kyle's a very wealthy man now uh, let's not forget kyle has star blades kyle's rolling in star blades money uh let's see um isaac lavinia says uncle e shill for your boy he would only take a bullet for you uh don't worry we're gonna do that i'm trying to get this stuff out of the way first guys this is a big part of the show today this is a big comic skate show we're gonna be talking about everything that's going on right now uh, let's see. Headrock says, yeah, what the fuck, Ethan? Uh, $750,000 goal for Kyle. Yeah, yeah, maybe. You know, we'll do something like that. Uh, Kyle could buy Smiller. Uh, well, you know, just because he could doesn't mean that Smiller should avoid paying Mike uh, or paying Kyle. I mean, Mike, Mike needs to pay Kyle. If you hire somebody, you need to pay them. You can't just say, well, you know, I don't have the money right now. Tell me that you don't have the money right now before you put me to work for you. You know, for goodness sakes, it's ridiculous. Downshift suggested it should be a $1 million stretch goal for Kyle. That wouldn't be nice. <laughs> that wouldn't be nice at all. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at this, guys. So this is, we got a couple of bits of big news. I'm going to get this one going first, and then we're going to kind of move on so that we can we can watch this as the night progresses. Your boy, Zach. And by the way, I don't know. Maybe I was asleep today. I know I was. Let me see if he actually said anything to me. Uh, yeah, he kind of did. He sent me a he sent me a link to a he sent me a broken link while I was asleep uh, to this. Good job, Zach. Uh, Jawbreakers, a Grand Bazaar graphic novel. 
this is Jawbreakers 3 by Richard C. Myers. Uh, those Myers sound like uh, anti comics gate. Richard Meyer. I call him your boy, Zach. I don't like calling him Richard Meyer. Uh, this is the third episode of Jawbreakers uh, by your boy, Zach. Uh, most of us bought the first two. Uh, I want you to include yourself. Uh, include yourself in purchasing uh, this new one. This is the third episode. Boy, up to look at this Kyle Ritter drawing. Mm -mm -mm. Hold on. Let me do that again. Mm -mm -mm. Is that better? Uh, totally awesome. I like the way this character looks here. Uh, this is the uh, the third one. You know, Zach is working really hard on Jawbreakers. Uh, he is going to continue putting out Jawbreakers books. Uh, we had to talk about this, and I just said, I want to draw Cyberfrog for the rest of my life. Uh, I get more and more ideas for Cyberfrog every day. I never want to stop. Uh, and it's a it's a property. I really think that, you know, Cyberfrog is, is important. Zach tries to do other things all the time, and I'm like, settle down and just work on Jawbreakers. I understand you've got Iron Sights. You've got a few franchises. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, the Expendables. Certainly, you could do another Expendables book. Uh, you know, you've got this and that. Uh, you know, you're, you're doing this book, Pandemic. Uh, settle down and do more Jawbreakers stuff because this is what people want, I think, uh, Jawbreakers. Uh, this is crazy right here. Hold on a second. Hold on a second here. Okay, good. Okay, all right, I got it. Okay. So, Zach is, uh, Zach. this is the book right here, $25. Uh, variant cover book and pinup. Uh, that's interesting. I don't know who's doing the variant cover. Uh, Devil Dog Cloth Mask. Uh, Zach is conscious of your health. Uh, he wants to make sure that when you go out in the public, uh, you can look like Devil Dog and also protect yourself from airborne diseases. Uh, that's your boy, Zach. He's, uh, he's a good guy. He cares about you. Uh, why don't you get that? And then where the uh, combo pack, this is the, uh, with the combo pack, you can get the Devil Dog, um, dog tags, Devil Dog tags. Uh, that's a good idea. Grand Bazaar 2-pack. I guess that's one of each cover. Uh, you can get them signed for 100 And that's it. That's it. That's that's where Zach drops off. Let me read this. I haven't seen any of this yet. No, I saw this. I saw that. Uh, let's see. I, I didn't see this Kyle Ritter cover. This is beautiful. This must be new. He would have sent this my way. Afghanistan, 2008. Being a superhero never really paid Silkworm's bills. Uh, but being a private military contractor during the height of the global war on terror is highly lucrative. Uh, it's good. Wow, that's badass, dude. Aaron Alfici. Is it Alfici or Alfeci? Just amazing. Wow, man, this guy can draw. You have to take a minute to appreciate this. You know, Zach really, uh, Zach has a way of, of working with some of the best artists. Uh, he does great at just getting these guys. Uh, Grand Bazaar, uh, every six, 66.5 years, the Grand Bazaar appears. Uh, inside, anything uh, can be found, haggled over, uh, traded, or bartered. Uh, there's only one rule. You cannot use currency or credit to acquire that which you desire. Nothing has cost, but everything has price. Uh, very cool, very creepy. Look at this. Oh, this is, a, this is just awesome looking. I'm just taking a minute here. Great, great artwork. Man, you just got to step it up, guys. Those of you who are comic skate artists, step it up. That includes me. Uh, the men who eventually form the Jawbreakers each find themselves in the Grand Bazaar for different reasons, but they end up banding together for survival. Good stuff, Zach. Uh, yeah, typically great artwork, great action sequences. Uh, Aaron is, uh, Aaron's great. This looks a little like Eric Larson here, but good. Like the layouts, it looks like the layouts were done by Eric Larson, but the finishes were done by a really good, good, competent artist because Eric's finishes, uh, look like shit. Uh, this looks terrific. Uh, merch for the first time, we now have actual merch. So they're going to make devil dog cloth masks, uh, devil dog dog tags. Each subsequent jawbreaker campaign will have a different set of dog tags for each member of the team. This is a good idea. This is a little bit like the uh, the uh, trading card thing that I've got going, where I'm just like, look, I'm going to keep making trading cards for you and make sure to collect them all. He's saying you're going to have to collect these dog tags. Uh, progress report. We're already well into production. 30 pages drawn, 18 pages colored, uh, main cover complete. Uh, yeah, Aaron, Aaron kicks ass. And the thing about it is, is as soon as this is done, he's going to get started on the fourth one. While Zach is still printing this and fulfilling it and doing all that stuff, Aaron's going to be like 10 pages into Jawbreakers 4. 
that is the great thing about this uh this production line uh yeah beautiful uh oh zach's gonna do the variant cover zach's gonna do his own variant cover this time around good for him uh you know he needs to be doing more artwork i think damn this looks cool uh, guys, make sure to back and show uh, a tremendous amount of support for your boy, Zach. I got to get him on here uh, and talk a little bit about this and talk about his future plans. He's already at $15,595, even though I have no idea when this campaign started. Uh, I rolled out of bed around 730 because uh, I rolled out of bed around 730 because Andrea said, I'm cooking uh, pork out on the grill. She's like, do you want some? She said, there's stuff on the porch for you. And on the porch, there were solar umbrellas, solar lit umbrellas. And I had to go put those out there. And I ate pork outside with my bare hands. Just a little bit, you know, not a lot, just two pieces of like uh, pork chop. Uh, and then I uh, came right down here, got, got showered and dressed and, and got right to work. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Zach. I don't know when this launched, but I hope... Uh, I hope you guys are going to back this. We are going to be promoting it. We'll talk to Zach. We'll get everybody in here. It's going to be great. Uh, okay, so today, today, uh, <laughs> Ethan, you usually just roll around. Uh, let me talk to you guys in the chat for a little bit. Uh, Lalu uh, Papa, Lala Papa says, "Ew, I can't stand eating pork." Well, Andrea is a good cook. You you would like Andrea when you know anything that she makes out on that grill. She's really really good, and and you would you would change your mind, I'm sure. Uh, Grant D's nuts says so happy you're doing a blood honey box. Uh, decided on a color for it. I'm guessing the color of boxes for comics three and four: blood red and frog green. That would be a good assumption. Uh, Hail Comics Gate. He says, Grant, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a very simple box, and I it might be black. Uh, I haven't I haven't fully decided yet, but it's gonna obviously it's gonna be simple. It's gonna have the Cyberfrog jumping piece on the front cover. Uh, maybe I'm gonna make it big, oversized, like the uh, the jumping piece, and stretch it around the cover a little bit. Uh, I'll design it a little bit. I'll de I'll design it so that it looks cool. Uh, but um, I'm not gonna create any new art for it. All the art for Blood Honey, as far as I'm concerned, is finished. No more uh, no more stuff for that. Um, we'll, I'll I'll work it out. I'll work it out. Um, yeah, and, and I'm glad you're excited about it. Uh, we got a nice sticker here from Keaton Smith. Thank you so much. Uh, new member here, uh, Mad Kadar uh, Ruth Carr is a new member of uh, the channel. Uh, and by the way, uh, thank you for doing that. Everyone who becomes uh, a member of the channel gets a Rumblebee trading card. Artist formerly known as Hey Mike Mike says, keep it cool but inexpensive. Well, there, I'm not going to put any books in it. Uh, all right. What I'm going to do is this. Let me Let me run this by you guys. Uh, I'm going to put the box out and I'm going to put the box out for like a nominal fee. Uh, I know how much the box costs to make. So I'm going to try to make some money off of it. Uh, but I'm going to put the box out empty for a nominal fee. Uh, and then I'm going to say, do you want the box with uh, this silver foil cover of Blood Honey in it? Uh, that's exclusive only to this box. Uh, because I have the guts now. I have the insides to do uh, the gold foil version of Blood Honey that's going to be in Wrecked Planet. I could just offer it like if you haven't read Blood Honey yet, here's the silver foil second printing of it that comes with this box. Uh, what do you think? You know? Um, yes, yes. Uh, let's see. The blood, the guts, the honey. Hmm. That way you can get it. Yeah, there'll be a silver version and a gold version. I'm printing 2,500 of each. Uh, they're already at the printer. Uh, that way you have a choice. There are some people who are like, I don't want to buy Blood Honey again. I already bought it like, you know, 17 times. All right. So if you already bought it 17 times and all you want is the box, I'm going to sell you just the box. Uh, if you haven't bought Blood Honey yet, or maybe you've only bought it once, but you want the second printing, you can buy the box that comes with this one edition of Blood Honey in it, which will rattle around because <laughs> there's nothing else in the box. Uh, card holder and binder says uh, Rand 185. That's coming soon. That's a whole separate campaign that we're going through right now. Uh, we are going through the trading cards, uh, and we are going to be launching. Uh, we're going to be launching that campaign soon. Travis Miller's here. He says your boy Zach is awesome and super helpful. Hey Travis, how are you? Uh, let's see. Uh, Sketch therapy says hail Caesar. Hey hail Sketch. Great to see you. Um, let me see. I just want to read the next one. Geez, says Justin Miller. It's coming. It's coming. But, you know, we got to people want things. Uh, that's all I'm working on is the next one. Understand that, like putting together one of these boxes, 
Uh, I will, uh, I'll do a rough sketch and I'll assign somebody to, to put it together for me. Don't you worry about it. It's not going to take up any of my time. Uh, Mindful Lions here. What's up, chat? Uh, Mr. CPU says, give me your box. Give me your box. Put soy bomb on the blood honey box. Ooh. Hmm. The idea of just soy bomb on the box. Here comes the invasion. That's an idea. Uh, let's see. You need. You just need 7K to uh, be Earthworm Jim. Oh, okay. So let's check in on this here and see how we're doing right now. Uh, Cyberfrog Wreck Planet. Let's do a quick refresh. Uh, boom. 690,000. Thank you, everyone. We just passed 690,000. Uh, I haven't. I don't have Earthworm Jim up here to compare it to, but I, Earthworm Jim, I think, got to 696 and change. We are about $7,000 away now from um, passing Earthworm Jim's a two month accumulated total, uh, 696 and change. Once we get to 697, uh, we'll consider that evil defeated. And then there's the ultimate evil, which is the 815 total uh, that he raised over the course of an additional three months worth of uh, in demand funding. So we're going to go after that too. We're going to beat everything. We're the Cyber Frog 2 Wreck Planet. I don't know what it is about me. Uh, I don't know, guys. Uh, but I have to, I'm the alpha dog, I guess. I've got an alpha, I've got an alpha uh, dog to Naple. Uh, so uh, that's what we're, that's what they say about me. Like, you have so much ego. You just have to beat Doug to Naple. No, I just want my book to be the best. That's all. Everything that I do, I want it to be the best. It's important. Now, if other people come along and they beat me, that's great. That just sets another milestone. That puts up another hurdle. That's another goalpost that we want to achieve. Always be out there trying to achieve, guys. That's what it. That's what it's about. Six hundred and ninety thousand, ten thousand dollars away now. Ten thousand dollars away from everybody receiving a keychain. Everybody is going to get one of these for free in their packages. They're going to go, oh, cool, and they'll, maybe somebody will take it off the keychain, give it to their kid uh, who will choke on it. No, do not let your kids choke on the Cyberfrog keychain. They will. Uh, this is going to be for uh, for grownups, not for children under the age of three. It is going to be a choking hazard. I want you guys to be aware of that and be careful. Don't let that happen. Uh, I wrote this. Uh, amazing. We're almost at $700,000. Absolutely inspiring. At the moment of this writing, we're approaching $690,000 in funding. Now we're there. Uh, and that means we're close to $700,000 and a free cyber fraud keychain for all backers. I've got the digital model for how I want it to look. Take a peek. I'm not sure if I want it to be metallic silver or just make it silicone PVC in full color. And I'm going to ask you guys that. Don't say anything yet because I can't see you, but I'm going to ask you guys. Uh, but this is what I want the keychain to look like. I'm getting prices now so I can figure out what's possible and put these into production when we get there. This story is so fun to build upon. The wonderful thing about Cyberfrog uh, is that I gave myself all of the puzzle pieces 25 years ago. I just didn't know how they fit together. Uh, but lots of experience at DC Comics with some of the best creative minds has taught me to listen for the little moments of inspiration. Guys, understand there's a little angel that sits on your shoulder. Creative people know this. I was talking to Antonio Bryce about this. You have a little angel that sits on your shoulder uh, and whispers little things to you that are inspiring, the ideas. I don't know where they come from, but you know you have to be able to listen for them. Uh, and then there's another thing that sits on your shoulder that tells you, hey, stay up all night with Cecil uh, and drink an entire bottle of Bullet uh, and then wake up on the floor the next day and have your wife, your, you come up the stairs and your wife says, hey, kids, here's your alcoholic father. That's You don't want to listen to that voice. Uh, you want to listen to the voice that says, Ethan, you know, um, Cyberfrog came to Earth in 1996 but something else came to earth in 1995 and it explains everything. It explains everything. And then you go, thank you, little angel. Thank you. And you get excited about everything that you're doing. You get excited about Cyberfrog. You get excited about the story. Uh, everything kind of uh, at the context, additional context is added to what you do. More dimension. Uh, it's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. That's Jeff Johns for you. That's Jeff Johns' influence. Uh, Cyberfrog Rack Planet is going to be a fun ride. Once again, thank you all for investing in me and in Cyberfrog 2 Rack Planet. Please tell your friends and invite them to be a part of this too. I want to write and draw Cyberfrog stories, dozens of them. Some people think they're only going to be four of these. No, dozens of them for the rest of my life. Uh, and you're making that possible. I hope you're as inspired as I am. Love Ethan Manscaver. By the way, dozens of them for the rest of my life. That means I better stop eating you know, entire pies with my hands 
or I'm not going to get to dozens of them. Certainly, I will be writing cyber frog stories for the rest of my life, but not dozens of them. This is very presumptuous of me. Yeah, I'm going to have to take vitamins, supplements, run on the treadmill, run outside, run like a Russian soldier, run in the cold and the rain. Doesn't matter. I'm out there running, you know. That's that's awesome. Every single day, I'm inspired by everything that I say to myself. It's a good thing that uh, it's a good thing that I talk to myself a lot. Uh, okay, uh, I'm taking the under a few. Uh, Six hundred ninety thousand guys. That's where we are. Death pusher points out six hundred ninety thousand for Cyberfrog Two Rag Planet with ten thousand to go until we get to the keychains. Now I want to ask you guys. Uh, choke me with more product, please. No, I'm serious. No, okay. Look, here's what I want to ask you guys. Uh, should I do these keychains? Should I do them little like rubber PVCs? Now, when I say that, I'm picturing the Smurf PVC toys in, from the 1980s that little girls used to collect. They'd be about this big, okay? And they were kind of a rubbery thing. They had paint steps on them. Should I do Cyberfrog in PVC with paint steps or should I do them like silver metal? Uh, you know, let me see what you guys are saying. Please, uh, please let me know in the chat. Uh, Head Rock says, uh, stop asking me stupid questions. All right, we got metal, uh, metal, PVC. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, but metal, metal, 100%. Do pogs? No, 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 nothing that pokes your sack, says D. That's a consideration when you're driving. What if you have an accident when you're driving, uh, and you are thrown through the front of the car, and my cyber frog metal keychain ends up lodged in your scrotum, you know. That's, I got to consider things like that. Chromium keychain, metal, metal, silver metal, Smurf, PVC, metal, metal. It looks like metal. Looks like metal to me. Most of you are saying metal. Dan Fraga says pie. That, that's not the question, Dan. The question is not pie or not pie. The answer is pie to that question. This question is metal or PVC, Dan. Pay attention. Uh, Camara says cocaine. Camara, it's not going to be cocaine. I can't afford it. You guys are not getting cocaine uh, for getting me to seven hundred thousand dollars. I appreciate it, uh, but you know I am not. Uh, I'm not Scarface. Uh, let me see here. John Branson for ten dollars. I love your shows. I love your comics. I'm not rich, but I back you when I'm flush. In this insane world uh, where the mainstream comics push garbage, I was blessed to find you and Zach and Cecil. Well, you know we uh, we're glad you're here. Uh, I'm definitely glad you're here. Thank you for being a part of Comic Artist Pro Secrets and Comics Gate. We love you. Travis Miller says, Comics Gate is inspiring me. Hail, hashtag Comics Gate. All right, Travis, uh, that's exciting to know. Uh, that is exciting to know. A lot of people are inspired by Comics Gate. Number one Marvel fan says, Hail, buddy, glad you're on tonight. I know I haven't, I I, I told Andrea, I said, I've been kind of lazy lately. I am, uh, you know, I've been on Cecil's show. I go on other people's shows. I went on uh, uh, the Jack show last night in the middle of the night. I'm mostly working on my own stuff. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing. I haven't done live streams. I've not been promoting my own work. I really should be. So I said, tonight, I'm not doing anybody else's work. I'm not doing anybody else's shows. I'm just doing my own. Sabrov says, make it a rear view mirror. Uh, hang, not a keychain. Yeah, but Sabrov, we can do both of those things. And I don't know why we couldn't do a Cyberfrog air freshener that smells like pie. Uh, there's no reason why we could not team up with Glade. By the way, Glade, the Glade logo, if you look at it in the mirror, says Ebola. Don't fuck around. It says Ebola. You guys try it. Go buy, go buy a bottle of Glade, hold it up to the mirror, and you'll notice that the logo, logo says Ebola. They're not fooling anyone. They're not fooling me. Uh, but anyway, there's no reason why we can't make a, a Cyberfrog air freshener. If you want, you know, we can make one. Uh, PVC goes with my rubber salmon max keychain. It's yeah, a nice vote there. It's true. It's true. Uh, Dimaj and I says, hail brother, miss you, man. Looking for the Phantom Menace meetup next year. Looking forward to it. I think you mean. Uh, yeah, that's going to be uh, in what well, we're, we're thinking. It's going to be in May of 2021, but everything has stopped. You know, all progress on everything has stopped. Uh, we're still going to do the uh, For the Fans Fest. Uh, we got to get back on track with that. I think by May, everything's going to be OK, right? We can we can meet up in May next year. Can you inoculate us, Donald Trump? Uh, get it done. Job of the Cuck says never going to happen. Job of the Cuck, you might not come, but we'll be there. Uh, let's see. CJ Raven 5 says, I want something that does poke my sack. 
He wants something that does poke his sack. Yeah, he says, yeah. Um, all right, so let's talk about a few things. First of all, I want to talk about Vestige. I did get my package today. Now, uh, I'm not going to show you this side. They, they ship this very well. This is a beautiful Gemini mailer. Right here, this is my address, my home address, my home address, uh, which uh, I'm not going to show you. Uh, you know, I'm not going to show you out of concern for protection of my docs, even though there are lunatics right now. Uh, one of Mike S. Miller's mods, one of his beloved mods, uh, is sharing around my home address where I live with my little girl, my two little girls, and my uh, big kid boy, uh, my my hunter, my bigger boy. I want to call him, uh, he's still my little boy, uh, but I don't want to, you know, marginalize him. Uh, and sharing around my address and fantasizing about my assassination. I like the word assassination when it comes to me. That's what it would be. It would be like uh, Malcolm X. You know, if they got me, it would be like Malcolm X. It'd be like Martin Luther King. Taking me out would be like that. It'd be that much of a statement. John Lennon, Robert Kennedy, John Kennedy. That's what it would be like, you know, if these if these maniacs did take me out. This guy sharing around my home address and saying whatever happens to Ethan happens to him. What a, what a, what a, all right, so don't worry about it, guys. Lincoln, thank you, John Malin. Absolutely. More important than Lincoln. More Bud Dwyer. No, Adrian Stone, not Bud Dwyer. That's <laughs> no, no, Lincoln. Uh, most certainly. Uh, it'd be a dastardly deed, of course. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> I'm not getting that. I'm not getting Lincoln from people. I'm getting somebody. Somebody was nice enough to say maybe John Lennon. Maybe. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Krista Joe says, Ethan, I recently moved. How can I contact you with my new address? Krista, that's important. Uh, well, one thing that you can always do is go into the campaign uh, and change your home address yourself. You know, you can do anything. If you, if you, uh, if you already put your address into Wreck Planet or Unforgettable Tales, go in there and make sure that your address is correct. Otherwise, we're just going to ship to that address. It's going to return to us. Uh, if it's for any other reason, um, you know, you can go to cyberfroghelp at gmail.com uh, and send us complaints of that nature. You know, we'll, we'll take care of you. Dimaj and I says, perish the thought. We need you around, brother. I'm not going anywhere. I'm fighting these people. I'm fighting these lunatics. Uh, too fat for the straight jacket says, Ethan, I already bought blood, honey. How is this one different? Stay fat and female uh, says uh, too fat for the straight jacket. Uh, how is this one different? You mean the silver one? Uh, it's, it's going to be different in that it'll be on better paper. Uh, and it will be, uh, it'll have, uh, 80, it'd be 88 pages. It's going to be all of cyber frog blood, honey. And then it's going to also have the ash can cyber frog, uh, 1998, the, the diary of Heather Swain will be included in there in one big book with the spine. It's going to be square, not square bound, square bound. Uh, what do you call it? It's going to have a spine on it. You know, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's going to be on much better paper. It's going to be a nicer thing. It's going to be the second printing, of course. Uh, so it's not going to be worth as much, but it is going to be very, very nice. A nice addition to your collection. Uh, it will be 99.9% .9 silver this time. Guaranteed. We're not messing around. We learn our lessons. Uh, all right. All right. So anyway, uh, this was great. I, I got to say. Let me get rid of this. Look at this. See, I wanted to save this bubble wrapping sleeves. I, I would never do this. We don't even go to the step when we ship. Um, but the uh, war campaign uh, who puts out vestige, they do. They wrapped all of my books uh, in this uh, bubble wrap so that it would get here safely. Uh, this is a copy of vestige. Uh, I read this book. I sat down and I read it. I don't get a chance to read too many comic books these days, but you know, I, I try to read all. I try to read all of the uh, comic skate books that come because I want to know. I want to know what's good. I read Clint. I think Clint is great. Gat Hanzo can write. Uh, this is a fantastic. I I told them it reminded me of a, of a Twilight Zone episode. Uh, you wouldn't know it by looking at this. You would go, "Oh, this looks like a western." A western. Uh, well, part of it takes place in the old west. You know, part of it takes place in London during the same time period, 1892. Uh, this is a, a cool superhero horror kind of like, a, I would say, Twilight Zone episode. Uh, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. 
Gat, Gat Hanzo is a great writer. Donald DeLay drew this. Uh, and um, let me see. Let me show you a page that you haven't seen yet because we've seen we've seen a lot of this already. Um, there are a couple of pages that are just like, whoa, dude. Oh, all of it. Great color palette, too. Uh, you know, I absolutely love this book. This looks this is so much fun. Uh, Maddie, it's all about Maddie. Uh, it's all about weapons. Uh, and the acquisition of uh, super powerful uh, vestiges, uh, these uh, these special weapons uh, from uh, from history and mythology. Uh, and, uh, you know, what can I tell you? I did the cover. Uh, the cover looks cool. You see that little shiny effect on the uh, on the gun and on her choker there and on the logo. Uh, this is just a beautiful presentation. So I got two copies of this. I always back at the high tiers. I want to make sure that you guys send me money. I mean, I get I get money. You guys have uh, uh, have uh, have done really. We've done really well. Uh, so I want to kind of return some of that to the Comicsgate community. I always try to to back these uh, campaigns at high levels. Uh, I received a ton of window clings, uh, and they did these correctly. Like the window clings are actually the sticky part is on the part that you're. I'm learning. I'm learning lessons. Uh, I really am every single day. The other thing is uh, I got a bunch of my own poster uh, and I, I hung one on the wall. Let me see if you can see this. I moved this over there. Uh, I've added the, uh, you know, I've added vestige to my wall of stuff. Uh, I will continue. Look at that pair of socks by the garbage can there. You know, I walked outside with bare feet. I got my socks wet. I took them off. I threw them by the trash can. It was wet outside, and now you guys get to see my slovenly, filthy lifestyle. Clean up your bastard office, Ethan. Clean up your filthy bastard office. How could you do that? Uh, I got a bunch of these posters. Uh, these are cool. I think I want to do these as well. I think I want to do these kind of fold-out uh, posters like you would get inside magazines. Uh, these are convenient. They're easy to ship. Uh, they're fun. Uh, they're inexpensive. Um, and they just, they, they make a really nice kind of, uh, you know, bonus. So uh, I will say Vestige. Uh, I will give it an A. I will give it an A. Uh, it was a really, really good book. The link's in, is, did I put the link in the description? I don't think I did. Uh, make sure to back Vestige number one. Let me just show you guys this campaign here. I love it when Comicscape fulfills. Uh, and they're close. They're this close to six figures. Gat Hanzo uh, and um, the incredible Donald DeLay. Donald DeLay's out there doing everybody's books but his own. Donald, where is uh, where's your book? You know, where is the uh, where's the gigantic, incredible Hulk greaser book? And don't give me Nasser Rabadi as an excuse. You know, you don't need him. You never did. Uh, vestige number one, go ahead and back this, uh, get a copy. Uh, don't forget to also get Donald's other effort cash grab the graphic novel by Cecil. Let me just refresh this and see. No, no, it hasn't moved. Hasn't moved. Dan Fragg is a uh, black flag pineapple perception comic book. Uh, this is a, a big, huge smash hit. Uh, it's only been funding now for about six days. Uh, we're going into uh, the first week, first week of funding. Uh, and we're already, look at this, we're already at uh, $87. we are wow, we're $3 away from $88,000. Uh, we want to get uh, we want to get Dan to uh, six figures by next week. That's what I would like to see. I'd like to see Dan get to $100,000 by, uh, by next week. I think that would be great. We need another six-figure campaign. Xenotype uh, by Liam Gray uh, and Odie. And by the way, his artist is incredible. This guy, Odie? Uh, he's 19 years old. <laughs> he's 19. I'm going to kill you, Odie. Odie, I'm going to kill you. Uh, there's no way a 19-year-old uh, should be this talented. And yet, uh, there is a 19-year-old that's this talented, uh, amazing artist, and uh, Liam found him. How did Liam find him? Liam has to be the most underestimated Comicsgate creator in the world. Uh, Liam is a great broadcaster. His show is a lot of fun to listen to. And his comic book looks dynamite. Uh, this looks really, 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 really good. Uh, he's out there doing uh, manga when the rest of us are chasing superhero books and horror books. Uh, so this is uh, 
This is awesome. This is black and white. I think it's also in color, though. Here's a little shout out to Cyberfrog here. I appreciate that. That's very nice. Uh, but this is this is the work of a 19-year-old. Do you understand? Uh, so you can get it in color, I guess. You can get it in black and white. And here's the color pages versus the black and white pages. I don't know which I prefer. I think I kind of prefer black and white, but uh, that's not to say the colors aren't good. It's just I'm, you know, when I think of manga, I think of black and white. And I think of manga all the time. Uh, look at this. You matter. Look at this superhero, dude. This is a cool looking character. He's so cool. I want to have Cyberfrog beat his ass. Uh, that's how cool he is. I want to have Salamandroid step on him. That's I want to, you know, that's how cool this character is. Uh, you know, good cover, good art here. Great job, Odie. Great job. Don't let Odie, don't let Liam take all the credit here. Uh, this is clearly uh, an incredible, uh, an incredible project. And you are spearheading this, my friend. We need the artist to stand up a little bit and uh, take ownership of these properties. Uh, great, uh, great work. Uh, let's go back and let's look at uh, Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar by your boy Zach. Just launched it today. This is the the third. Zach's the first uh, first one of us to get to our third book like this. Uh, I'm still uh, you know working on my second one. Um, let's see. I think uh, uh, John Malin launches his third one in June, uh, but Zach's already launched his third one. Seventeen thousand eight hundred and sixty dollars. Uh, we got to keep pumping this one up. Zach does great business with Jawbreakers. Everyone loves Jawbreakers. Uh, this book should definitely get to six figures pretty quickly. Uh, be a part of that. Don't miss out. Make sure that you get not only the book in the ash can, but make sure to get a cloth mask. Uh, make sure to get the cloth mask and the dog tags. Collect these dog tags because he's going to produce a bunch of different sets of dog tags. Uh, and, uh, you know, yeah, help your boy Zach and get the next uh, get the next Jawbreakers. Uh, Cyberfrog, uh, Cyberfrog 2, Wrecked Planet, 690000 uh, Thanks, guys, for supporting this campaign. We're already on our way to 691 Boy, we're already on our way to 691, which would put us six thousand dollars away from beating Earthworm Jim's two month total with two weeks to spare. If we got to six hundred and ninety seven thousand, can you? If we got to six ninety seven, we would be beating Doug to Naples two month total on Earthworm Jim, the first Earthworm Jim book, with two weeks to spare. <laughs> I love it. Uh, it's fun. Cyberfrog Unforgettable Tales as well. Uh, all of the Salamandroid um, Blacklight posters are packed up. Uh, we haven't shipped them out yet because we're busy uh, shipping out the Rumblebee trading cards, uh, which is a huge project. But uh, they're all packed up. Uh, we just have to print out the shipping labels, put them on them. And then I guess we have to hire a pickup. I mean, I don't know how I'm going to send 300 posters. We got to, you know, normally what we're doing lately is we're loading all of the uh, packages up every single day into the back of our SUV and driving them over to the post office. But uh, this is such a huge project. This is such an epic project uh, that we're probably going to have to call the, the postman to come pick them up in this day of uh, COVID-19. Uh, get over here. Um, let's see. We're doing layouts for the cover for, uh, or we're, we're putting the cover together for Wreck Planet the Ash Can with this exclusive J. Lee cover. Uh, and we should be having, uh, I should have these to show you pretty soon. The cover should be all mocked up. Uh, colors are ready. I've got puzzle pages by 3D Robin, little activities for the kids in the back of these comics. And they're only $10. That's what I'm so proud of. You know, it's like we offered these books for $10. Uh, which is very, very inexpensive for a Comicscape book. In fact, it might be the cheapest Comicscape book. Is it the cheapest physical Comicscape book, $10? I want to check on that, uh, but it's uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, so proud to do that. You know, I hope you guys uh, back them. I hope you get a copy of Comic Book 1 and Comic Book 2, uh, or get both of them, or get all, all of them, uh, including the uh, Wreck Planet Ashcan. Get these uh, Blood Honey line art variants, one of every comic, two of every comic. We've got, you know, we've got what you need here. Uh, so back this campaign. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, all right, so uh, let me check you guys out again. Number one Marvel fan, thanks for uh, $10. Doing a lot to help promote everyone's books. Store discounts are working well. If they order the books and show proof, hoping to get Dan to 100K by Tuesday. Comicscape Vanguard. Thank you, number one Marvel fan. Um, number one Marvel fan is a retailer, uh, I believe. And uh, appreciate all your efforts to, 
to help support and promote comic skate projects. It's, it's big of you. Argentico2003 said, seen Geek Chorus newest song with Adam Post yet? Uh, is that the Soy Boy song? <laughs> yeah, I've seen it. I see it again. Hold on a second. Let me let me look that up. Uh, whenever Geek Chorus does a new song, uh, we we like to uh, take a minute to to play those for you. Uh, he's absolutely terrific. Uh, da, 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 da. Look, he's like re uh, he's redoing all of the songs. He's redoing them now that he actually paid to have the watermark removed. Mm, Soy Boy Booze Brothers parody. Okay, all right. Let's let's look at this together. Uh, from the Great Geek Chorus. Turn the industry into a dust bowl. <laughs> Unsold comics by the truckload. They reboot stories, can't create nothing. Self righteous bricks into fart puffing. You're a sore boy. You're a sore boy. You're a sore boy. You're a sore boy. Daniel Kibble Smith has a baby head. <laughs> High tea heroes make him wet the bed. Dreams of safe spaces and cries at night. Cause the world ain't fair. Oh, when the world ain't right. For a soy boy. For a soy boy. Soy boy. Boy. Now listen, they bully people like they're from the street. But Mark Way when, when he saw Ron Cooley, Sleazy Tim Doyle, and Fat Dan Slot, blame consumers for the mainstream rock. Cause they're soy boys. Cause they're soy boys. Ha, ha. Soy boys, cause they're soy boys. So give them rope and they'll hang themselves. Creepy dopes who belong in padded jail cells. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wonderful Geek Chorus. Every single time, just knocking it out of the park. That's our boy Geek Chorus over on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to his channel, like all his videos, enjoy all of his music. He's created uh, some fantastic tunes for Comics Gate, a lot of inside jokes, <laughs> just great stuff. Argentico 2003, uh, there you go. There's your uh, there's your Soy Boy song from, uh, from Geek Chorus. Thank you uh, very much. I'm telling you, we've got creative talent all around us. I wish some of it would rub off on me a little bit. I mean, not, <clears throat> you know, uh, I, I wish I could be creative uh, a little bit. Uh, Adam Post, what did Adam Post do uh, on that song? That's what I want to know. Uh, Adam Post, uh, absolute genius. All right, House of Art going on my music list. Hail Geek Chorus, as the artist formerly known as Mike Mike. <laughs> nice avatar. <laughs> I'd never noticed that before. <laughs> Uh, Bob, a bug with one eye is king, uh, is saying, you are an inside joke, Ethan. Oh, Bob, why, why do you do this to me, Bob? Uh, he did the low vo vocals, I think, says Robert Romano. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, good job, guys. Very, very good job. All right, so we got some uh, stuff going on right now. I want you to know that I got something in the mail today, uh, which was pretty exciting. I was not expecting this. Uh, hello, Allegiance Arts. Discover a hero in everyone. Well, not everyone. You know, most of these people are, you know, pretty empathetic. Uh, uh, most of the people in comics, uh, original collectible comics, 
comic books return to Walmart. Uh, thank you. Uh, do not use the word return. My advice is do not use the word return. Uh, I mentioned Elizabeth. Uh, you are. A, <laughs> you guys have magazine stand distribution. It's entirely returnable. Pray that they do not return your comics. Greetings, Ethan and Andrea. Please enjoy these complimentary comics uh, copies of our flash. Uh, let me read this again. Greetings, Ethan and Andrea. Please enjoy these complimentary copies of our flagship titles. Uh, these genre-spanning tales arrive at U.S. Walmart stores and Walmart.com on May 5th, although they're already there, guys. Uh, they're already there. Uh, all right. So uh, with our commitment to consumer-trusted content, uh, every member, member of your family will find high-caliber thrills and entertainment in the Allegiance Arts lineup of comic books. And he describes the books. Uh, you know, if you fans enjoy uh, these thrilling adventures, we would love you to share them with your family, friends, and uh, other fans. Thank you. And I got, I got, you know, the autograph there. That's nice. Uh, much love and can't wait for our copy of Wrecked Planet. Beautiful. I love it. They've got a letterhead. I don't have a letterhead. I don't have a letterhead. I didn't make my own uh, letterhead. Uh, and they sent me this, uh, which uh, includes a Red Rooster mask. They sent me this exclusive package, I guess, of the books which I already purchased. I already have these books. Uh, so I'm probably uh, not going to, uh, probably not going to open this because it's just uh, very nice. But they made Red Rooster Red Rooster masks. Uh, all right, so uh, moving on here, uh, let's look and see what Bleeding Cool has to say. Bleeding Cool actually covered this event. Uh, and they had to because this is a tremendous, uh, this is a tremendous success uh, for the comic book industry. Uh, this is uh, pretty groundbreaking and innovative. Uh, Mitch and Elizabeth uh, have been working on this comic book deal at Walmart for two years now. Uh, and finally, the day has arrived. Uh, finally, the day has arrived. DC Comics has had considerable success in the last couple of years, placing original titles in Walmart in their giant line. Marvel has joined them. By the way, Rich Johnson, you'll notice the thing about Rich Johnson is his passive aggression. His passive aggressiveness. Uh, he can't just say, uh, hey, this is really big. An indie company managed to you know, get their comics distributed through Walmart. Shut out of the mainstream. Shut out of the direct market. Uh, this couple, Mitch and Elizabeth, managed to build a business and get their comics first distributed uh, through Walmart. That's an amazing achievement. No, Rich is going to be passive aggressive and point out... Marvel and DC did it first. Not like this, they didn't. You'll see. Uh, no new publisher, uh, now new publisher, Allegiance Arts and Entertainment will be doing something similar. Uh, so it's not a big deal. You notice this? Not a big deal. Marvel did it first. DC did it first. They're doing something similar to what Marvel and DC did. What a fucking bastard he is. You know, Rich Johnson, you are a piece of fucking awful. You are shit. Uh, you are, you are, uh, you are the lowest of the low. This guy really is a scumbag. Uh, <laughs> laying it on a little thick. Uh, the company uh, has been formed by comic creators and husband and wife team, uh, Mitch Breitweiser and Elizabeth Breitweiser, uh, with Arkansas businessman uh, David Martin. Martin is the CEO of reputation management crisis consulting firm, uh, Allegiance Consulting Group. Uh, here are the books right now. Uh, Mitch and Elizabeth Breitweiser's new comic book publisher in Walmart, Art from Indiegogo. The publisher will see Walmart place end cap displays in over 3,000 stores uh, with uh, around 70% of all Walmarts. With four, They better come to my Walmart. I have two Walmarts in my neighborhood. I'm going to be checking both of them. Uh, with four launch titles, each priced at $4.98 for 24 pages of story, one cent less than DC's titles. Uh, each display will have 10 copies of each titles per store uh, with space to display back issues as well. And in a move away from DC and Marvel's offerings will also be available on walmart.com. I didn't know that. That's cool. Uh, Nora's Saga, written by Blake Northcott, our Blake Northcott, and our Kelsey Shannon. Uh, the Futurist, written by Patrick Stiles, pencils by Butch Geis, inks by Rick Magar, colors by Mitch and Elizabeth. Bass Reeves, written by Kevin Grievix. Uh, pencils and inks by David Williams, colors by R. Kelsey Shannon. Red Rooster, written by the despicable piece of shit, Mark Pellegrini. Uh, by the way, Mark, uh, I understand they rewrote your entire story. Uh, <laughs> I understand they didn't use anything that you wrote. 
Uh, and your name shouldn't be in this at all, Mark. Mark Pellicreepy, your name should not be in this list. Uh, Pencils and Inks by Mitch Breitweiser. Colors by Elizabeth Breitweiser. Uh, that is uh, that is important here. Nora Saga Futurist and Bassaries were crowdfunded together on Indiegogo last year. Red Rooster two years ago. Here we go. Backers had received copies of the first three, but not of Red Rooster yet. All books, uh, all books were edited by Patrick Styles and designed by Chris Kendrick. Purely by self uh, shelf space alone, that's a print run of thirty three thousand eight hundred and forty copies, uh, and they will need more to cover crowdfunding damages and online. Uh, more, wait, wait a second. Hold. Purely by social, social print run. they will need more to cover crowdfunding damages and online sales. That's right. Yeah, they're going to have to print more than that. Uh, Mitch Breitweiser gained some controversy four years ago. Here we go. Uh, let's run this guy down. Uh, let's uh, remind people. Uh, let's remind people that he's controversial. Mitch is not controversial. Uh, he congratulated Donald Trump when Donald Trump won the election. And that's when the entire comic book industry swarmed him and his wife. Uh, and uh, made it so that he could not work in comics. All he did was he drew a picture of Donald Trump with a sword, and he said, uh, I wish... <laughs> he said, I congratulate the new president. Here's to moving forward and peace, togetherness, and all this stuff. Now, uh, in the future, Mitch, uh, if Trump has a sword, uh, you know, put, the, uh, put a decapitated donkey head in the other hand or something like that. Uh, although a number of those seem to have no problem working for Marvel, however, uh, who's chairman Ike Perlmutter? Here he goes. Ike Perlmutter allows Republicans. Uh, that's not how it works, dickhead. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Ike is not fully aware of what goes on at Marvel Comics. Uh, Ike is not fully aware uh, that some of his talent work together in secret whisper network campaigns uh, in private Facebook rooms. Uh, to uh, to basically convince everyone uh, to not work with uh, to not work with Republican out Republican professionals. If you are a Republican, you need to keep it quiet in the comic book industry. Uh, you're only allowed to be a loudmouth left wing activist. That's the only thing you're allowed to be in comics in the mainstream. You don't have a choice. Uh, that is why all people of morality and ethics should be comic skate. Uh, even people who are leftists or left wingers uh, who have a conscience and have a, a sense of morality will agree that that is unacceptable. Uh, Comicsgate actually uh, stands for keeping that stuff out of comics, keeping it out of comics. It has no place in comics, uh, you know, no place in comics uh, to be uh, to be that kind of a bigot, uh, to be somebody who creates a hostile working environment uh, for other professionals who might disagree with you. So uh, this is disingenuous, uh, stupid shit. Uh, all right. Uh, after the Bright Wisers were tangentially linked to Comicsgate activist group. Uh, by the way, tangentially, he was on all the live streams. They pulled out of the Lakes Comic Art Festival in Kendall over personal safety concerns. They were threatened. While none of the books have claimed to be Comicsgate titles for promotional purposes, uh, that after all, potentially, they might need permission these days. What is this shit? Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Very funny. Uh, they <laughs> will look at that in a second. They've been heavily promoted by comic skate figures and feature a number of creators uh, who are associated with or, or approved of uh, by using those hashtag. And if that brings them any problems, they have David Martin on hand. Uh, each comic consists of six issue arcs, uh, then collected as trade paperbacks, addressing the issue that people would be able to read Red Rooster in Walmart long before backers got uh, the backed graphic novel would be ready through Indiegogo. Mitch and Elizabeth told one buyer, I can definitely understand why you and others might be bummed about the release schedule. I could either rush the project, not pursue the Walmart publishing opportunity, or take the time to make everything just right. We chose the third option, uh, and I'm glad to hear that the uh, quality shined through to you. Uh, as comic book stores have closed, shuttered, and gone into lockdown, Wal Walmart is one of the few places still selling comic books. Mitch Breitweiser told ICV2 that the best bet... Oh, <clears throat> damn, I'm not reading well tonight. Let me try again. Let me slow down. Uh, the bet is that there's a large undeserved market of fans uh, that would be readers of comic books, but they just don't typically have access to them, or at least convenient access to them. As I asked all kinds of people my age, younger store owners, how they discovered comic books, nine times out of 10, the answer would come back to me as, quote, I discovered in the Kroger at the grocery store while mom was shopping or in the drugstore. Uh, which was my case as a youngster. They typically aren't found there anymore. And 
very, very uh, few cases. Uh, the hunch is, the bet is that if we make them discoverable, accessible, beautiful, and make the stories extremely great, which obviously we feel like we've done, then kids will pick them up, cherish them, and find a new hobby. Uh, we'll ignite the chemicals in their brain uh, that form this nostalgia for a lifetime bonding with creators and content. Mitch picked up some of my talking points <laughs> during our things. Yeah, chemicals in your brain. Uh, this is great. This is great, Mitch. Congratulations. This is really cool. Uh, all right. That's happened thousands and thousands and thousands of times before. And we feel that if you put the right product in the right place in front of the right kids, then essentially the light bulb will go off and the chemical reaction will go off. Uh, we feel we'll be very successful in doing so. Uh, we're certainly proud to have excellent partners with Walmart and ReaderLink who both believed in this pitch and this vision. We feel very confident with both of their research and their data. Uh, that we have a strong opportunity to win over all these customers and sell our books in mass market stores. They also point out uh, that they, they also point out they, the, the, God, rich fuck. It's not just me. It's not just me that has reading trouble right now. It's because this is incomprehensibly written. Rich Johnson's illiterate and he doesn't edit his own articles. They also point out they, the DC and comics and Marvel comics titles appear in the collectibles area of the Walmart of Walmart, whereas distributed into Walmart by ReaderLink, these comics will appear in the book section. Uh, they also intend to expand from four titles to six by the end of the year. Very exciting. Red Rooster, written by, not written by Mark Pellicrepe, rewritten, rewritten. Uh, Pencils and Inks by Mitch uh, Breitweiser. Colors by Elizabeth Breitweiser. Light Braves the Darkness. Uh, darkness fears the dawn. For centuries, the mantle of the red rooster has passed from generation to generation to fight mankind's most ancient and terrible evils. Now, Frank Cooper must rise to the challenge. Rockwell meets Lovecraft in this Dust Bowl era, Southern Gothic cape and cow's mystery. Now, here's the Futurists. That looks great. Bass Reeves looks great. Nora's Saga is, is great. The amazing Blake Northcott and Kelsey Shannon. Uh, fantastic. Uh, so these are just ads. Uh, the rest of this is good, as Rich Johnson does try to bring up uh, darkness and problems. Uh, he tries to point people towards them. If you are a crazy SJW, uh, you know, look, uh, let me remind you that Mitch Breitweiser is Comicsgate, uh, and so are many of his creators, in case you want to do some shit about it. Uh, and by the way, let me gaslight you about Ike Perlmutter and the fact that none of this is a problem anyway, according to Rich Johnson. SJWs do not harass people. Let me explain something. If you are Comicsgate right now, if you're in Comicsgate, you are probably infuriated by this. You know what it's like out there. You know what these people do. You know what they do to you uh, when they find out you're Comicsgate. Imagine Rich Johnson writing articles saying, uh, you know, gaslighting people and saying that this isn't happening because of like Perlmutter. What an absolute disaster. What a ridiculous thing. The Brightweisers had to pull out of a convention because uh, they feared for their lives. Oh, it's infuriating. It's so infuriating. Uh, okay, so this is another thing here. Uh, potentially, they might need permission these days. Rich Johnson teams up with uh, Preston Poulter uh, to gaslight Comicsgate. Preston Poulter pulled a, a stunt, I guess, last week. Uh, Preston seeks to uh, get some attention for his terrible, weird comics about lesbians and airplanes, and not the good kind of lesbian. Not the lipstick lesbian, uh, you know. Uh, he seeks to get attention from uh, Comicsgate by doing these things to upset Comicsgate. This is bullshit. You can't trademark the word Comicsgate. You have to trademark it in association with something. And you have to show some reason why you are the one to own it. Otherwise, it's stealing. And the trademark office will actually just kick it. They're not going to let you do it. You have to say, well, I'm trademarking Comicsgate for... Uh, I'm making co uh, Comicsgate coffee mugs. These are Comicsgate brand coffee mugs that I'm making. This is my business. I'm making coffee mugs. Uh, and then they kind of consider it, but they make sure that you have a right to it. Uh, have you used it in commerce before? Uh, no. Well, has somebody else? Yes. Uh, and that is, that is the problem. And do I, am I going to do anything about it? Am I going to uh, sue for the uh, trademark so that I own Comicsgate and nobody else can use it? Of course not, because I barely own it. I, I only own it in a common law weird kind of way. I have a claim to it. I'm not going to do that. Comicsgate does not belong to me. Comicsgate doesn't belong to uh, any one person in particular. It belongs to everyone. 
and ever thus it shall be. If you want to do Comic Skate t-shirts, you can do them, and nobody should be able to stop you. It belongs to everyone, absolutely everyone. Uh, so fortunately, Comic Skate mostly ignored Preston, except for just some guy who made two hilarious videos just owning the shit out of him. Just owning the shit out of him, which I, I thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, he's a very smart guy. Uh, not getting any traction uh, with Comic Skate. Uh, and the trademark, and fearing that he would have to answer for having lost and having been rejected. I mean, he applied for the trademark for Comicsgate. Uh, it would take them three months, ordinarily up to three months, to tell him whether or not he was entitled to it, uh, barring any uh, disputes uh, that some people might file. Uh, he decided to just uh, pretend as though... <laughs> this is great. Hold on a second. Wait, did I hit the uh, volume? I don't know if I did. Uh, d -d 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 -d. this is what trolls do. This is why you just ignore these people, guys, and laugh at them after. Ignore them during and laugh at them after. Here's Preston. There you go, Comics Gate. So I am allowing you to get your trademark back that I took from you through my underhanded tactics. There you <laughs> what a fucking douchebag. Dude, they denied you the trademark, you ass wipe. Uh, they denied it to you. Uh, and you can't have it. You know, obviously you cannot have it. Uh, Comics Gate is, uh, Comics Gate's a consumer movement. The, the word Comics Gate belongs to everyone. You can use it in business if you want to. Do not be afraid of these trolls. Do not be afraid of these people. Uh, they're simply, these guys believe. And by the way, everybody was waiting for me to make a comment about this. And I just said, there's nothing to say. They're not going to give him the trademark. He can't, even if they did, he couldn't stop us from using it. He couldn't stop us from using Comics Gate. Uh, to to do what we do to be who we are because we were using it first. Uh, you know, lots of people were using it first. Lots of people were using it before him. And he's got a history of saying that he wants to destroy Comic Skate because it doesn't deserve to live. It doesn't, it doesn't deserve, doesn't deserve to live, you know. Guys a spastic. Guys a weirdo. Uh, so this is just ignore him, guys. Enjoy yourself. Uh, this isn't uh this was never a thing and it wasn't worth considering, but it is funny to see him kind of walk it back now. <laughs> I'm giving it back to you. That's exactly what Vox Day did when I sent him a cease and desist letter. I'm giving it back. I'm giving it back. Uh okay. Thank you very much. We appreciate your generosity. Uh, you fucking weirdo. You fucking weirdo. Uh, all right, thank you, everyone. Uh beautiful. Let's see what's going on in the chat. Uh, Grantee's Nuts says, just went to the mail and boom, got my Rumblebee and Heather Swain trading card. Thank you, Ethan and Andrew. You're quite welcome. Uh, and uh, FYI, uh, this is a crate. Uh, this is a crate of uh, the next trading card, which I hope you guys uh, entitled yourselves to. Uh, this is the Vespas trading card. Okay. Uh, this goes to anyone who, uh, and by the way, this is R1. This is Rogue, Rogue One, uh, this trading card. Uh, this is going to go out to everyone who um, gave uh, gave me their email address and joined the advanced notification list for Rec Planet. Now, it's too late to get on that list now, but good news, thousands of people, literally thousands of people signed up uh, to be a part uh, of the CyberFrog Rec Planet campaign, uh, or at least, hey, let me give you my address because I plan to, plan to back it. Uh, I am going to be sending you out requests uh, for your addresses. I'm going to send out a MailChimp saying, you know, if you want your card, we need your address. It's not going to be now, but it's going to be fairly soon. As soon as we're done, we're caught up and we have a moment to breathe. I want you to get your Vespas trading cards before I start shipping Rec Planet so that you can uh, you can have it. Uh, and uh, thank you, guys. Uh, definitely appreciate you for that. We're, we're on top of things around here. We're getting things done. Promises made, promises kept. It's Comics Gate. It's Cyber Frog. Uh, it is the biggest crowdfunded comic book of all time, and it always will be. And thanks to you guys. Uh, all right, let's see here. Um, uh, comic Artist Pro Secrets. Zach Davison or Ron Mars? Pick your poison. Uh, I I oh, I'd rather poison Ron Mars. Uh, that's the question. I'd rather poison Ron Mars. Uh, Lord Job of the Cuck says Ethan sent me shit in the mail. It has Cyber Frog written all over it. Uh, that's not true, Lord Job of the Cuck. I never did that to you. Uh, knock it off. Uh, all right, let me see here. I'm going to read some uh, super chats. Uh, but before we do that, <laughs> Job of the Cuck, before we do that, let's go through the campaigns again and just check and see how things are going. Uh, Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar. This is Jawbreakers 3. Uh, let's refresh this and just see how uh, Zach's doing. Are we, uh, we're getting close to 20, getting close to 20,000. Uh, $19,185 with 30 days to go. This is a, a good debut for Zach. 
Uh, very impressive indeed uh, and typical of his success. And the thing about Zach that I love is that like, you know, his campaigns will just stay steady. He doesn't really have a drop off period. His campaigns just continue to trickle in big money all throughout their entire uh, term. Uh, make sure that you back Jawbreaker's Grand Bazaar. Uh, the link is in the description. Uh, thank you guys for supporting it. Fragabooms, a Black Flag Pineapple Perception comic. This is indeed a big one. Uh, everyone's talking about this uh, because, uh, you know, Dan Fraga is Dan Fraga is one of the new guys who kind of came over. He's a professional. He came over to Comicscape and people were wondering if he was going to succeed or not. Uh, and so far, he really has succeeded. He's at eighty eight thousand four hundred twenty eight dollars. Uh, people are continuing to back his campaigns, uh, back this campaign and the other one, too. He's got another campaign for uh, Evil Ernie and Red Sonia Black Flag uh, team up cover. Uh, they're still continuing to back him, and they, they probably still will. Everyone loves Dan Fraga. Uh, he's uh, he's a great guy. Uh, cash grab uh, by Cecil. Let's see if it's moved. No, it hasn't. It hasn't moved. Uh, Cecil Cecil needs to self promote a little bit more, but do definitely back cash grab. Uh, back it because you're going to get this pinup of Anna, uh, that Star Wars girl, uh, as uh, Hut Slayer. Uh, the human Cecil P cover, a source of a lot of controversy. I uh, thought it was going to be John Malin, but it isn't. It's going to be uh, Gina, uh, who is uh, Gina's a man. You know what? I'm, this is the whole thing. Uh, they have to pretend Gina's a beautiful woman, but Gina's a man. Gina's just a man in a wig uh, with lipstick. And I'm tired of this charade. I'm tired of this PC charade. I'm not going to play around. Gina, Gina has a beard. Gina has a beard. I don't feel like it's rude to point that out. Because Gina's a man. Gina is going to be uh, it's going to be the head of the human uh, centipede. I know everybody's going to okay. Go ahead and simp for Gina, chat. The, the entire chat's going to white knight and simp for Gina. Oh, poor Gina, are you okay? It's a dude. Gina's a dude. You don't have to simp for a dude. Anyway, Gina is going to be the head of the uh, Cecil. <laughs> And then, of course, the Ashcan Adventures of Dirtworm Doug. Adventures of Dirtworm Doug here. Uh, this is uh, this is Cecil's Ashcan. I cannot wait for this. It's being drawn by Scotty Richards. The artwork is hilarious so far. Uh, make sure to back that. Uh, and these are the first five pages of Cash Grab, which are glorious and beautiful. I'm telling you, uh, Donald DeLay. Uh, <laughs> Donald DeLay is awesome. So good, man. Donald, how did you get so good? Uh, you can get this rare uh, Cecil head sketch. Some of you didn't know Cecil was uh, an artist. Uh, Cecil is an artist. And he's fantastic. Stretch goals already all met. I think you should come up with a few more. Stretch goals are good. Never stop making stretch goals. Never stop doing that. Uh, vestige number one. Uh, we talked about this earlier. I read this book. I will tell you that not only uh, does this book look good, and it does look good, uh, Gad Hanzo. The, the one thing about comic gate books that you don't know, I mean, these are indie books. You don't know the creators all the time. Uh, is Gad Hanzo a good writer? I'm here to tell you, Gad Hanzo wrote a fucking hell of a book. Uh, this is a great yarn. Vestige number one, uh, I want vestige number two now. Uh, I feel like uh, it left me kind of, uh, you know, looking for uh, looking for another 40 pages. Uh, vestige number one, great comic book, terrific art, guys. Uh, it's already shipping. I've received my copies. They're beautifully done. I want to get this campaign to uh, six figures because, look, uh, it looks good for Comicscape. I love it when books hit six figures. Absolutely love it. It's marvelous. Um, what else? Uh, Xenotype. Xenotype by Liam Gray uh, and Odie, who is 19 years old. Uh, one of the best artists I've ever seen at the age of 19. Scary good. Uh, forty six thousand uh three hundred and uh, ninety eight dollars. Uh, everyone, continue to back Xenotype, please, and let's get him to fifty thousand. Uh, you know, pick up a copy of this book. And I'm telling you, when I show people this artwork, they can't believe it. I'm like, this kid is—he's nineteen years old. He's a teenager. Look at this cityscape. This is this is. Look at this. <laughs> I can't. How did he do this? I can't do this. This would take me forever. If I if I had to draw this, this would take me forever. Uh, you know, I'm somebody who likes to uh, be very quick with my artwork, but that would take me forever. Uh, this is uh, marvelous work by Odie and by Liam Gray. Liam Gray, great at just uh, creating a, a story, a narrative, uh, good flow, good characters, great scary-looking villains, 
and a hero that you can relate to. He's just a teenage kid, just like Odie is. And uh, life, life is good. Uh, life is good. Um, all right, so make sure to to, to back uh, Xenotype Volume One on Indiegogo. Uh, once again, uh, we've got my comic book Cyberfrog Two Rec Planet as we approach seven hundred thousand dollars. Seven hundred thousand dollars, which is of course the uh, the point at which uh, I will make a keychain for everyone. Uh, this is the keychain. Uh, we're fortunate in that you know our campaigns are so big and we're raising so much money that we can afford to add a lot of extras. You know, you contribute twenty five dollars to Cyberfrog Rec Planet, and you're going to get a lot of free stuff with that. You're just expecting one single comic book, this Jay Lee comic, or, or you know, go ahead and get my cover, get the uh, Heroes Chromium variant, or get both of them. Uh, there are add-ons, uh, you know, at checkout, so that you can make sure that you do not miss one one thread of the story uh, of Cyberfrog. Uh, get Wrecked Planet, get a copy of Salamandroid Death Sting, and you're going to be all caught up with us. You're going to get four books when you buy two, four different books. Um, and because of that, because of our tremendous and absolutely inspiring success, uh, everyone is going to get a Cyberfrog keychain. Uh, the question was, are we going to do them in color? Are we going to do them in metal? And overwhelmingly, you guys voted for metallic today. You know, you guys said, uh, hey, uh, we'd rather have this be metal. OK, that's probably uh, something that uh, I don't know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work it out. Uh, metallic Cyberfrog keychain for everyone who backs Cyberfrog Blood or sorry, old habits die hard. Cyberfrog wrecked planet. Uh, some of you are going to say, hey, Ethan, um, you know, what the hell? Uh, I uh, I didn't read Blood Honey yet. Well, don't worry because we've got it right here on eBay. We've got two links for you. Uh, this is our store, Cyberfrog Nine. Okay, look at this, 100% positive feedback, and the reason why is because Andrea ships your books out to you fast, fast. If you order it today, you'll probably have it in your hands Monday. Uh, maybe not. It's Friday. Uh, well, we we ship out. People usually get the books in two business days. Uh, you can get them here. You can get the uh, copy of Blood Honey, the team up cover. This is a first printing. Uh, you can get a copy of Amphibionics and Cyberfrog 1998 here, uh, or you can see sellers' other items here. This is uh, what we're selling right now: uh, Cyberfrog Blood Honey team up variant autograph, thirty dollars. We've sold we've sold like four hundred copies of this. We've had to repost this uh, same campaign. We put up a hundred at a time, and we sell right out of them. Uh, so I put up 200 and we've already sold 111 of them. Don't miss out. We're we're running through our stock. I think we have about three crates of these left, which is uh, uh, 80, 80 per crate. Uh, so we'll have some Cyberfrog uh, team up variants for a little while longer. Uh, right here, team up variant plus ash can. Uh, right here, just the ash can. So you already read Cyberfrog Blood Honey, but you didn't read Cyberfrog 1998. You need to. It's right here. We've sold 92 of those. Uh, and this is the uh, Cyberfrog Wreck Planet Huge J. Lee poster, uh, 24 by 36, a two feet by three foot poster. Uh, let me take a look at this. Did we sell any? Yeah, we've only got nine left of these. We've got nine J. Lee posters left. Uh, make sure that you uh, you go ahead and get one for yourself uh, before we run out. Um, yeah. Um, a lot of interesting stuff on eBay. Uh, I saw Jim Lee is doing these charity drawings. Jim Lee's doing charity drawings. Uh, of, uh, you know, of characters and putting them up there and all the money raised for his sketches uh, go to comic shops. Uh, and recently he put up, uh, now the rules of this are, uh, the rules of this are, hey, uh, you, uh, you know, you if you win, you get to choose the next character that Jim Lee draws. Look at this, he drew Atrocitus. That's my character. I created Atrocitus. He drew my character Atrocitus. That is awesome. This is a Jim Lee Atrocitus sketch. And whoever wins the uh, Jim Lee Atrocitus sketch gets to choose the next character that Jim Lee draws and puts up for auction. God, that's awesome. It's a good thing I won it. Uh, so uh, I am going to ask Jim Lee to draw Cyberfrog. Uh, that, is my, uh, that is my request. Uh, Jim Lee, you have uh, drawn Atrocitus. I have won uh, your Atrocitus uh, drawing. Uh, and now uh, you are going to draw Cyberfrog. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. That is fantastic. I won this auction. You won this auction. Yes, I did. Send me my Atrocitus and then draw Cyberfrog, publisher of DC Comics. Uh, <laughs> I always have something for you guys. I always have something for you. I never let you down. 
Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, I'm going to read your super chats uh, and uh, see what's up with you guys. See what you're saying. Uh, <laughs> the chat is loving it right now. Chat is absolutely loving it. I, that's my auction money that I raised. I raised auction money from you guys, and I turned around, and I'm spending it buying Jim Lee's Atrocitus drawing so I can get him to draw Cyberfrog. Uh, all right, let me see. Hail, hail Comics Gate. Hail War Campaign. Hail everyone in the chat. Hail the chat. Hail motherfucking Comics Gate. Trademark all of us. Trademark copyright this community. Trademark copyright uh, you, the, the customers. Nobody can take this from you. Comicscape belongs to you. We fought for this. We fought hard for this. Nobody's taking it from you ever. No chance of that. That's why we're here. Keaton Smith, thanks for the sticker. Uh, let's see. Duran19 says, I haven't had a haircut since... Uh, wait, I hadn't had a haircut. Some just Andrew Christmas. I don't know what that means, but okay. Uh, Thunderbird says, embrace the quarantine mullet. <laughs> I can't. My hair looks horrible when I don't cut it. I, I mean, look. The the key to the, the key to looking less bald when you're as bald as me is just keeping your hair trimmed down. Uh, let's see. Yo, I need that's keychain. Yeah, I do. Says Dan Fraga. Well, we're gonna get there, guys. Make sure to back Cyberfrog Wrecked Planet. Make sure to back Cyberfrog Wrecked Planet today. Uh, Hatch four fifty SX says, "Got my Rumblebee card. Uh, it's awesome. Thanks, Ethan. Thanks, Andrea. You know, Andrea is the one who's shipping all these cards out to you, and she sent another batch today." Uh, I don't know how far along we are, but I think we're almost through shipping the uh, Rumblebee trading cards out. Uh, let's see. D Farm Creative says, that's a lot of sharp edges in my pocket. That's true. <laughs> yeah, you are. You put the keychain in your pocket and it's poking you right in the ball. Well, look, I mean, you know, don't have it hanging out of your pocket. Uh, Nick Lefo says, please give Sea Dog and Codename Kill Switch a shout out, Uncle E. Uh, don't let John Malin's second Comics Gate effort lose to Nasser's first campaign total. What the hell is that? Uh, sea Dog and Codename Kill Switch, guys, on Indiegogo. Hail. Uh, Man of Sex says, this is like a Caesar a Comics Gate QVC. Uh, where is the 800 number? Man of Sex, I totally want to do that. And I'm telling you, the next step, uh, the Brightweisers might have gotten on Walmart. I'm going on QVC. I want to sell Cyberfrog to the masses. I want to sell Cyberfrog to old ladies sitting at home with their credit cards. I want to sell uh, Comics Gate books uh, to people. Uh, who are sitting at home, shut-ins, layabouts, uh, and seniors. Uh, that is, uh, that's is—that's what I want to do, and I will. Chris Farsala says, I back both the Eyes of March and the Honeycomb Box. Are they going to be shipped? Okay, I answered that one. Uh, Peter Armstrong's getting his Salamandroid sketch cover. Tank Ferret says, Hail, Comiscape Victorious. El Largo 30 says, Have we reached the goal for Kyle to get a bonus? Uh, let's, we'll, we'll, assign that, we'll assign that stretch goal as soon as we get to 700,000. Big Pun says, how about a red hoodie with Make America Green Again emblazoned on Cyberfrog's chest? That's a possibility. Uh, Sabrov says, Oakley Cyberfrog sunglasses? Sure. Uh, Grantee's Nuts says, so happy you're doing a Blood Honey box. Decided on a color for it. Uh, I think black. I think we'll just do a black. Uh, May Kidar, uh, Ruth Carr is a new member. Is going to get a Rumblebee trading card if he follows the community tab. If you join the channel now, uh, if you join Comic Artist Pro Secrets, uh, you will be able to go to my YouTube page you'll see a community tab. You'll click the community tab and suddenly a message will be visible to you that was not visible to you before. If you are a member in good standing, that message will be visible to you. Uh, you will be able to uh, follow the directions in there to uh, receive your Rumblebee trading card. And possibly if you ask nicely a Heather Swain trading card, that's possible. We'll see if we have any left. Uh, Rocket Simp No says, are all the cards sent? Uh, and I sent your Colt Gang shirt out today. Expect it Wednesday. Wow, thank you. I'll wear that Colt Gang shirt. I can't wait to get that. Uh, are all the cards sent? I don't think so, Rocket Simp. I, I don't think they're all sent out. I would say probably 75% of them are out right now. Uh, Sketch Therapy says, Hail Caesar. Uh, let's see. John Branson says, I love your shows. I love your comics. Uh, Michael Roth says, I'd like to use the keychain uh, so small and light. Uh, yeah, okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, number one Marvel fan. Hail, buddy. Glad you're on tonight. Thank you, number one Marvel fan, for $15. I appreciate you. Say, brav, make it a rear view mirror hang, not a keychain. Now, that just gave me an idea to do uh, car air fresheners, a Cyberfrog car air freshener. Uh, Michael Rodriguez says, PVC. It goes with my rubber Sam and Max keychain. Dimash and I says, hail, brother. Miss you, man. Looking forward to the Phantom Menace meetup next year. Uh, let's see. Dimash and I says, perish the thought. We need you around, brother. 
Uh, let's see. Christopher Arcella says $50 said the mod that doxed you was Hikaru. Uh, I'm not taking that bet because you're right. Uh, Ron Barrett says, uh, will Cyberfrog ever meet the other cyber beings and form something like the Green Lantern Corps? Wait and see. Wait and see. Uh, Indie Dave Comics says, Oddity is only three backers from 400 backers. We end the EVS cover tonight at midnight. So make sure to back Oddity if you want the Cyberfrog Oddity Jam cover that I worked on. Uh, Jade Spider-Man says, Mandy is closing Worth the Wizard tonight. Shout out. Shout out to Mandy and her Worth the Wizard on Indiegogo. Go over there and grab a copy of that. Support Mandy Summers. Poland805 says, Michael Bancroft's Lucent uh, launched yesterday also. Uh, Michael, uh, Michael Bancroft is awesome. He's the guy who's been doing these kind of Ricky Gervais show style uh, videos uh, where he animates my rants. And, uh, you know, uh, we want him to succeed. So go check out Lucent, L-U-C-E-N-T, uh, on Indiegogo. Give that some support. Travis Miller says, EVS, have you seen my book yet? Travis, I have seen your book. I saw the uh, I saw the campaign for it, and it looks pretty damn good. Uh, Argentico 2003 says, anyone seen uh, Geek Horse's newest song with Adam Post yet? We did see it. We played it. We'll play it again. Number one Marvel fan says, doing a lot to help promote everyone's books. Uh, store discounts are working well if they order the books and show proof. Hoping to get Dan to 100K by Tuesday, Comicsgate Vanguard. That's a great idea for a retailer to do. And thank you, guys. Uh, Hatch 450SX, I want to complain. War Campaign delivered my book in perfect condition. How dare them? Me too. Wiggle Wiggle says, just back the oddity figure. Plan to assemble and paint and then post a video on YouTube. Oh, I'll watch that video. Uh, Dan says, can't wait for my pie keychain. Hell, uh, hell me. Uh, let's see. Metal Movies and Brewski says sign up for bitch, uh, Butch Cleaver, not Bitch Cleaver. Sign up for Butch Cleaver on Indiegogo. Uh, that sounds cool. Butch Cleaver on Indiegogo. I'd like to see a book called Bitch Cleaver, too. Uh, 200 Watt Studio says, what's up, girl? Uh, Red Rooster and Walmart before backers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems to be the problem. And it, it, it kind of makes the whole thing a little bit more bittersweet. Uh, you know, Red Rooster backers are waiting for their Red Rooster books. And I, the book's not done yet. The, you know, half of it's finished. So he put out half of the book for uh, Walmart and he's got to finish the book. Uh, you know, I don't I don't know what else to say about that. Uh, he's got to finish that fucking book. Uh, Mitch, settle down, finish the book, tune everybody out. Uh, let's see. And that's the thing, you know, I mean, when I'm working on Wreck Planet, you know, it'll, I'll probably be like all summer long. I'm just going to be like phew, blinders on working on Wreck Planet. I, I, I need to get it out for Christmas. I cannot be late on this because I want to sell more copies of Cyber Frog 3 and, and Rainbow Brute. The only way to do that is to stay uh, in good graces with your backers. Unfortunately, uh, despite the lateness of Cyberfrog Blood Honey, uh, a great number of you decided to stick around and give me another chance and even back me harder this time, uh, which uh, is something that I am humbled by and I'm not going to take for granted. Uh, you're going to get wrecked planet by Christmas by hook or by crook. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rock it out. Uh, so uh, that's the key. Remember your customers. Remember your backers. Do your work. Uh, Loch Ness Yoshi says, hail Caesar, hail Geek Course, hail the chat, hail Comicsgate. Richard Carter says, how do I get a copy of Cyberfrog Blood Honey Chrome Edition? Uh, at this point, the only way to do that is on eBay through other backers. Uh, I have a, a crate of Cyberfrog Blood Honey Chrome Cyberfrogs. I just found it. Uh, I'm going to hang on to those. I've got two and a half crates of Salamandroids, uh, Chromiums, as it turns out. Those I'm going to sell. Uh, I am going to put the Salamandroid Chromiums up for sale because it's ridiculous. They're, you know, they should be out in the market. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, other than that, just go to, go to eBay. You know, there's no other way to buy them right now. Midnight Next House says criticism of Mitch for a two year old and no book prioritize, prioritizing retail over backers is legitimate. And it kills me uh, to see who's ignoring that. Uh, nobody's, I don't think anybody's ignoring it. Uh, people are just kind of like, uh, I think, accepting it at this point. But I mean, I will say over and over again, fans who were upset about Red Rooster not being in their hands, but being in Walmart so that, you know, uh, your average schmo uh, can go buy a copy of Red Rooster before the people who funded it and made it possible. And by the way, funded it at a time and not to lay it on too thick, funded it at a time when everyone was scared. I'm worried about money, worried about our careers. A bunch of fans got together and gave the Bright Watchers $200,000. That needs to take priority over everything. That's a debt that needs to be repaid. Make sure that you support, uh, make sure that you support the people uh, who helped you uh, in, a, in your time of need uh, and make sure that you get them their finished Red Rooster book and do it. 
Do it quickly. Uh, ER says, uh, where's my frog comics? Um, I got them on eBay. If you don't have a copy of Blood Honey yet, you can get one very, very quickly. Back rec planet, and I'm going to try to get it to you before Christmas. I have a deadline for myself on the uh, Cyber Frog Rec Planet campaign of May of 2021. Uh, that's just to give myself breathing room so that maniacs can't, you know, stress me out when I'm trying to create a great piece of work. Uh, I've committed to you and to myself to get this thing done by uh, by Christmas. Uh, so, or get it, get it to you by Christmas. Uh, David Tim says more like Mark Hella creepy. Uh, yeah, dude. I don't like that guy. That guy's a weasel. Uh, 200 watt studio says F Mitch. If he F's the backers releasing red rooster in Walmart first, Mikey Curtis says, I'm allowing you to have the thing you had before. Uh, Granty's nuts says, uh, I just went to the mail and boom, got my Rumblebee and Heather card. Thank you, Ethan and Andrea. Robert Romano says Poulter is so dumb. Uh, yeah, he's dumb, but you know what? He's like John Delarose in that he exists to troll. John Delarose is entirely about trolling. Preston Poulter is entirely about trolling. They are people who are insignificant. Uh, they really shouldn't matter to any of us, but they try to do things to get under comic skater's skin. And the best bet is always to ignore them, just always to ignore these people. Uh, you know, it's just that's that will make them go away, honestly. No one's reading their comics. Just a small amount of people are reading their comics. And let them have their comics. Let them have their audiences. But do not give them the satisfaction of thinking that they got under your skin. Uh, that's what bullies want. Bullies want you to uh, to be afraid and to complain and then be sad. Uh, that's what they want. That's what gives them their kicks. So deny them that. Uh, and I'll always be here, guys. I'll always be here to kind of... Uh, nobody's going to fuck over Comicsgate. You know, I'm sorry. This is my life. I will, uh, I will always defend Comicsgate. Comic Books and Cahoots says, Ethan is looking much less chubby, but twice as old. This is what happens to presidents, uh, though, Comic Books and Cahoots. We age. Uh, I feel like I'm presiding over the Cyberfrog thing and uh, my YouTube channel. I'm going to age very quickly as craziness happens all around me. Uh, James Dean Anderson <laughs> says, I just saw your boys' uh, new Jawbreakers campaign with R by Aaron Alfici. It totally looks freaking amazeballs up on Indiegogo. Yeah, you bet it does. 200 Watt Studio says, Mitch hasn't answered emails or messages about backers' concerns. New Doug Mike or Critias? Uh, no. No, I will tell you this about Mitch. Mitch did not mishandle the funds, okay? Uh, he didn't, uh, and I think he does care about the uh, the fans. Um, that's that's true, but he's... Just, mm, uh, Mitch is... Uh, being comic skate, you have, to have a, you have to have thick skin and you have to have a, a sturdy spine. Uh, because uh, being comic skate means you're out there in the streets, uh, you know, taking abuse from people, and uh, you have to be tough. You have to be tough. I think Mitch, uh, Mitch did not does not want to deal with this. Uh, and I think one thing where he's safe and comfortable is when he's talking about building a business at Walmart. He's talking about you know Allegiance Arts. Uh, Walmart is not full of crazy people, uh, and uh, he he just feels better there. Uh, that means he's not doing his work on Red Rooster, and he he does. I know he is doing it, but it's slow going, and he'd rather not do it. Uh, that's my impression of Mitch. That's how I feel about him. I want him to do it. I, I feel like I've kind of nudged him a little bit, uh, you know, um, but uh, I haven't really come down like, I, I, and I don't, other people are doing it. I don't want to. I don't want to be mean to people, but uh, Mitch, get your fucking work done. Uh, Jay Stowe uh, is a new member and will receive a Rumblebee trading card. Pale Rider says, back Sun Swarm by uh, Red Gaze on Indiegogo. Do it. Grant D's Nut says, uh, Devil's Blade crossed 200K last night. Indiegogo was crushing it. Devil's Blade by Raging Golden Eagle. Uh, one of uh, a very rare situation, uh, you know, uh, six figures young lady times two, double six figures young lady, two hundred thousand dollars for uh, for that book. I mean, congratulations, right? Uh, Raging Golden Eagle, that's gigantic. Uh, Eddie Rink Winkler says, Pie Man, you are a genius. Uh, Death Metal Hero says, Uncle E making 40 chess moves. <laughs> Hatch 450 SX says, Fucking Alpha move, Hail Caesar. Good time, Johnny J uh, Gentle says, you keep saying Jay Lee cover is a variant, as well as Heroes, Villainous Scum, and I spit on your uh, hive. Is there a standard regular cover not revealed yet? No, they're all just variants, really. I mean, the standard cover is the Jay Lee cover, right? Uh, but it's, you know, they're all coming out together. They're all first printings. Choose the one that you like or buy all of them. Uh, that's the cool thing about variant covers. James Dean Anderson says, in fairness, Jim Lee could raise a lot of money with a cyber frog drawing. Whoops. His uh, swamp thing was sick. If he drew Psylocke or Rogue, it would be money. Yeah, to be honest with you, I think if Jim Lee drew Cyberfrog, cyber frog, uh, uh, comic skaters would uh, 
<laughs> would toss a lot of money his way. I don't know if he's going to say yes or no. I mean, he might just say, I'm only doing DC characters. Well, uh, that doesn't seem like fair play to me. Uh, just draw whatever's going to make money for these uh, comic shops, right? Uh, Eddie Winkler says, best part of that deal is if the SJWs double down and don't bid on it, you can win that art auction as well. Boom. Now you get a Jim Lee frog pick. Here's a cover by Jim Lee. Cyber frog cover by Jim Lee. Over slick, or, or one slick dude says, EVS, you should do uh, the keychain in a 3D loose site image. Uh, I have one of those. Uh, you know, my my daughter got it for me for Christmas. Uh, they, she did the uh, Blood Honey 3D loose site. I've got it upstairs. Uh, view of Uranus says, leave Kyle alone. Uh, enough to do Starblades, please. I can't. He's got to do work for me, too. He's got to be able to do both. Uh, number one Marvel fan says, Jim Lee Cyberfrog going to be super rare pieces of art. Uh, going to be awesome. Hail. Scotsman TV says, I bought Red Rooster today. Going to review it on my channel. 200 Watt Studio says, you have earned our trust. EVS, we trust you. Uh, that's great. Uh, I won't let you down. Christopher Arcella says, apparently Jim Lee only allows you to choose the next DC character. So no cyber frog, unfortunately. Uh, cry face. That's okay. We'll still ask him. Uh, Jedi Knight and friend to Alita says, Pan wants meth campaign versus Jack show. Good for uh, Comics Gate. Uh, if it's entertaining, I didn't have R1. I thought I missed out on it, but I'm covered with the mailing list. Yeah, you're going to get R1. Uh, I figured Vespas probably should come first. You know, they're the biggest rogue, right? They're the biggest bad guy. Uh, Eric Weathers says, Battlebrick Road launches in one week. Check it out on Indiegogo. King Achar says, uh, what are talking about? Walmart isn't filled with crazy people. <laughs> As a former Walmart employee, I promise it is fin uh, filled with crazy people. Yeah, not in upper management, though. <laughs> uh, Adam Poe says, College of the Dead graduation day is $21,000. Back it now on Indiegogo. That's College of the Dead graduation day on Indiegogo by Adam Post. If you enjoyed his Soy Boy song, uh, make sure to uh, to throw Adam Post some... Uh, a little love there. Uh, James Ian Anderson says, Jim Lee can draw Heather with a chicken fry bucket. That'd be nice too. David Bowser says, is the thumbnail to this video going to be the cover art to I Spit on Your Hive? No, uh, it's fan art. Somebody made a three-dimensional Heather sculpt, okay? Uh, and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking about buying it and producing it, you know, producing it as a little statue. It's really beautiful. Uh, ER says, if uh, Jim Lee does Cyberfrog, I'll outbid you and have him do Salamandroid next. <laughs> He's going to draw all the characters. <laughs> Oh, uh, that would be funny. Uh, but yeah, I suspect that he's going to be like, no, only DC characters. We'll give you a hard time about it. You should be able to draw anything. This is for charity. Uh, this is absolutely in charity. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, War Campaign says, Adam Post is the most boring dude in Comics Gate. Wrong. That's Micah Curtis. Uh, Alan Sparks says, get those thumbs up. Hit the button. Uh, thank you very much, Alan Sparks. Yeah, anybody who has not hit the thumbs up yet, we've got 1,425 people watching right now. Thank you guys so much. Uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Please do put the uh, the thumbs up. Panboy says, debate me. Panboy, you want to debate me about Adam Post versus Micah Curtis? Uh, being... <laughs> Come on in here. I'll take you to the mat. Uh, let's see. Comic Books and Cahoots says, you can always make Jim Lee draw cock and balls. Uh, that is true. He can probably do that uh, uh, <laughs> pretty quickly. Uh, let's see. Wilberforce Wooster. Uh, oh, my gosh. What is going on in the chat? Debate me, Caesar. I'll make it fair and square. Uh, we'll we'll debate the issues. Uh, Hail EVS, ride the Black Dragon to victory. Got to do it, man. Hashtag Black Dragon. I didn't know what Black Dragon meant, but now I kind of do. Uh, Black Dragon is, uh, I mean, it's just uh, flat out honesty uh, about the state of things. If someone's fucking up, we got to actually, uh, you know, we got to talk about it. We can't just, you know, protect each other. If someone's fucking up, it has to be mentioned. Uh, upper management are just a ba are just backstabbing a hole says King of Churis. Uh oh. Well, let's hope not. Let's hope that they are. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's hope they're good to uh, to Mitch and Elizabeth. I, I do want them to succeed. Uh, let's see here. Uh, upper management. Wow, Chris Stanley, ten dollars super sticker. Uh, thanks very much, Chris Stanley. That's very generous of you. Uh, very generous of you indeed. Uh, <laughs> what? what is going on? 200 Watt Studio asked Jim Lee to draw Lone Star stealing comic quads. <laughs> that would sell too. Joe Voss says, excellent hat. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Scotsman TV says, would it be unex unethical to do a stream live read of Red Rooster? Uh, yeah, for me, it would be. I, I, I don't think I can do that. You shouldn't do it either because Mitch can do it. But that's Mitch's content. I, I did uh, Blood Honey uh, in 1998. I did live reads through those. 
Uh, and I thought that was my place to do so, but like, you can't give away other people's work like that. That is, uh, that is entirely on Mitch to do. Uh, let me see what you guys are saying. Uh, if Jim won't do cyber frog, make him do Lobo, but good Lobo. Um, let me see. Uh, no, I'm not even going to consider it. I want cyber frog, you know, I want cyber frog. That's, I didn't agree to any rules. I didn't agree to any rules about DC. Uh, thanks to Eric Cutfuls for Jackrabbits versus Cyberfuck fan art. I loved it. Perfect crossover, says Adam Post. Yeah, I thought that was pretty neat, too. I did enjoy that. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, really good. I mean, people send me stuff all the time. Uh, they send me fan art. And I keep saying, you know, like, Cyberfrog, Cyberfrog has the best fan art. Uh, there's something about Cyberfrog that launches people's imaginations, uh, and they want to draw them. They draw Cyberfrog. They draw Salamandroid. Oftentimes... Uh, they do it better than I do. Uh, this is Cyberfrog versus GI Jackrabbit. Here you've got Salamandroid down here as well. Uh, of course, Salamandroid is too small. <laughs> Salamandroid can pick up this Jeep with one hand. He's not to scale. Cyberfrog looks great. Uh, very, very nicely drawn, though. Very nicely drawn. Uh, scrolling down here, let me just show you an example of... Uh, oh, this was the sketch. I did this sketch this morning on the Jack Show on a backing board, you know, uh, which is pretty cool. It's fun to do stuff like that. Just kind of just, uh, you know, look at, by the way, look at this. You understand this is a big deal. This is a really big deal. You know, it's, it's a shame that it's tainted a little bit with the, uh, we should be happy about this. And I'm trying to be happy about it anyway, too. But yeah, like I did back Red Rooster. I think I, you know, I back Red Rooster at a very high level. And that's what I do. I just, I, you know, I want guys to, you know, I, I get given a lot, so I want to kind of uh, spread around the money that I get. Uh, and I wanted to uh, back Red Rooster. I backed it two or three times and uh, very high levels. And I, where's my copy of Red Rooster? Why are other people getting Red Rooster before me and getting half of the book for $5? Uh, that, whoa, what is this? That is a nightmare. That is a nightmare right there. Good job. Uh, let me see here. Scrolling down some more. Oh, yeah. This is what I wanted to show you. Look at this. So this is... Uh, uh, okay, let me get the artist. Did I put the... No, I didn't put the artist's name here. That's the, the guy who did the Heather Swain sculpt. Uh, this is what Cyberfrog would look like, uh, you know, this guy thinks, without any, uh, you know, technology. Uh, if you just took away his uh, tech, this is, uh, you know... Cyberfrog's flesh. Uh, interesting. It's not true. It's not, you know, his, you know, he, you can't take off his cybernetics, but this is still really, really cool. Uh, beautiful work. This guy, I want to hire him. You know, I, I do want to hire him for this uh, to, to do some toy designs. Something, man. He's good. He just, he gets Cyberfrog. The head is just right. The build is right. You know, he, he's got Cyberfrog's kind of uh, build and he's got the feet. The right size, the hands, the chunky fingers. Uh, this is interesting here. These are like these as organic, you know, his uh, uh, his shoulder fins as organic. God, it, everyone's so good. What? Oh, yeah, this is when I dressed up like a sailor the other night. I was, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's so beautiful. I would like to see that sculpted and made into a toy. Why wouldn't we do that? Why wouldn't we do that? We should totally do that. Uh, all right, let's check the uh, campaigns again. Let's take a look uh, at Jawbreakers. Uh, Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar, uh, which is in its first few hours of funding. It's past 20000 now, $20,000, 500 backers. Uh, just cruising right along here. Uh, make sure to back this comic book. The link is in the description. In fact, I think I put it first. Grand Bazaar book and pinup. Uh, variant cover and pinup. Uh, God King book and pinup. Make sure you can get a copy of God King. There's still a few of those left. Uh, he's got 1,200 copies to sell. Devil Dog cloth mask. Uh, and you can get a cloth mask with uh, the dog tags uh, for, uh, for Devil Dog. That's cool. Two-pack Grand Bazaar both variant covers. Uh, signed for a hundred dollars, you will get the book and the pinup, and it's going to be autographed by your boy Zach. Yup, it's he's just going to write your boy. No, he doesn't do that. He usually writes Richard Meyer or just Meyer. Uh, very cool. The artwork is fantastic. Obviously, I mean, look at this. Look at look. I mean, he's pulling the he's pulling the truck. 
Uh, that's super heroic, uh, but believable at the same time. Uh, the villains look scary. This is a creepy ass book. Uh, Aaron Alfici uh, is the artist, and he is at the top of his game right now. Uh, very detailed, uh, tough looking artwork. There's no soy here. Look at how everybody's like beefy, everybody's built. This looks like a superhero comic. I miss this stuff. You know, it's like I miss this. This is aspirational. I wish I looked like this. I don't look like this, though. But I wish I did. This makes me want to go to the gym and not eat pies ever again. Uh, you know, but then I think about pies and, you know, I don't know. Uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful artwork. Zach says he's got 30 pages of this finished, I think. Let me just see where he's at here. Progress report, 30 pages drawn, 18 pages colored, main cover is complete. Yeah, and he's just going to keep pumping these books out, guys. Uh, so uh, continue to support him. Uh, I appreciate it. He appreciates it. It makes Comic Skate look good. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's another uh, great Jawbreaker's Tale for you to read. Uh, Fragaboom, Black Flag Pineapple Perception. Uh, funding now, we're getting close to uh, 90,000, 88,500. Uh, he long ago has passed a thousand backers. He did that lickety split uh, and he's got 24 days left. We're looking at, we're definitely looking at, I think we're definitely, we can definitely say we're looking at two. Uh, we're looking at six figures times two, six figures, young lady, double six figures, young lady. That's what you say. At least, uh, at least at this point uh, with uh, a possibility for much, much more. This is definitely a huge campaign. God, you know, I keep forgetting like how these things go, but I mean, this does, this does look familiar. This looks like Jawbreakers one. This looks like lost souls. Same kind of rate of funding. Uh, this is uh, Dan, you have a hit, you have a hit, uh, cash grab on the other hand. Uh, let me see if it's no, it didn't, it didn't move. Cash grab. No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, did not move, but uh, that doesn't matter. Back cash grab. Let's get Cecil to 165,000. Uh, despite himself, uh, drag this guy along. Cecil, by the way, uh, I looked at Cecil uh, this morning on his, uh, on well, we're looking at uh, at Cyberfrog Rack Planet at, at the referrals. And referrals basically tell you who's actually referring you, where your funding is coming from. Now, most of my own funding is coming from me. I promote myself. So I am the number one reason why people are backing Rack Planet. Uh, and uh, somewhere down the list, number two is Mortal V, by the way. Mortal V, thank you. You're number two. You're the second person who's uh, selling Rack Planet. Uh, but uh, further on down the list uh, is Doug Tenaple. Doug Tenaple has sold like uh, nine copies of Cyberfrog uh, Wrecked Planet. You know, he mentions it and then people click over from his social media uh, to Wrecked Planet for whatever reason and they purchase it. Underneath Doug Tenaple is Cecil. Now, I want to just rub that in for a minute. Doug Tenaple is selling more copies of my book than Cecil is. And Cecil's my friend. And by the way, John Malin is selling more copies of Wrecked Planet. Uh, than Doug Tenaple is, but Cecil isn't. Cecil isn't. Doug Tenaple's outselling Cecil uh, when it comes to my frog book. Thank you, John. Thank you, John Malin, for that. And in the meantime, I said, Cecil, why don't you open up your page and why don't you look at your referrals? And I want you to see where I fall uh, in terms of who is selling your book. And he did that and his face fell. Uh, Cecil is not the number one referrer to his own book. I am. <laughs> I'm selling more copies of Cash Grab than Cecil is selling of Cash Grab. Cecil. So I, I said to him, I said, Cecil, uh, you need to uh, fix this now. Uh, I need you to sell two more copies of my book so that you can at least be ahead of Doug Tenable. I don't know if he's done that yet. I haven't checked. Uh, Vestige graphic novel. We're celebrating Vestige today. Uh, a great book. I read it. I enjoyed it. $91,688 as we push this campaign, which is in demand. Uh, towards its rightful place at six figures. And it's going to be a fun celebration once those boys get there. Gat Hanzo turns out to be a tremendous writer. Uh, you know, everybody thinks they're a great writer, uh, but uh, Gat Hanzo actually is uh, a great writer and he's going to get better. Uh, Donald DeLay, terrific artist, of course. Uh, and this book has my cover on it. This is my cover artwork. I rarely do covers for other people, but I did it here. Uh, this will come with a fold out poster, I think. You get a, you can get a, yeah, right here. One book and my poster uh, for $45. So uh, back this campaign uh, and let's push Vestige, uh, number one, the graphic novel by Gat Hanzo uh, and Donald DeLay. Let's push that to uh, 
Oh, by the way, they also use my letterer, Somni. Uh, so this is uh, t- uh, tied to Cyberfrog twice in two different ways. Uh, so uh, let's back Vestige and let's get this book to 92,000 as we head towards six figures. Xenotype Volume 1 Evolver Die by Liam Gray. $46,398. Liam Gray, one of the greatest talk show hosts in Comicsgate. Humble, a very humble man. He doesn't know it. Uh, he doesn't know that he's uh, a good uh, radio host. I had to tell him. I said, boy, you're really fun to listen to. Most people are a pill to listen to on YouTube. You are fun, man. Uh, I could put you on and work, and I, you know, I don't even feel like turning you off. You know, I listen to. Uh, I used to try to listen to Captain Cummings uh, because I was listening to all the Comics Gate shows. You know, this was before I really came out as Comics Gate and was, uh, you know, got myself into trouble. Uh, but I used to listen to Zach. I used to love his shows. I'd run out of his shows to listen to, so I try to listen to Captain Cummings because everybody said he's he's Comics Gate. I listen to Captain Cummings and his shrill, horrible voice and stupid opinions. Uh, I'd have to just turn him off. Like he he had like half of an idea and then he'd blather for like another eight minutes. I just fuck this, turned it off. It's not easy. It isn't easy. You can't just have a colorful get up and a whole gimmick. You actually have to be fun to listen to. Uh, Liam is fun to listen to. So I recommend uh, his show, uh, Life with Liam. Uh, that is uh, uh, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So uh, Life with Liam on YouTube. Uh, and uh, look, $46,490 as he uh, moves closer to 50000 tonight. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, here we go. Cyberfrog uh, Wrecked Planet. Do I dare refresh this again? I'm pushing my luck. Let's refresh it again. Uh, boom. Wow. $690,787. Uh, as we get closer and closer, guys, where are we trying to get? Well, we're trying to get to two places. We're trying to get to two uh, two goalposts. The first goalpost, uh, goalpost number one, uh, is six hundred and ninety-seven thousand dollars. That is Cyberfrog Two Wreck Planet passing Earthworm Jim's two-month total. All right, and and doing it with two weeks to spare. Uh, are we going to get there tonight? I don't know. I mean, you know, that would be amazing if we did. That'd be awesome if we did, but you know, it's it's work. You have to keep telling people about it. You have to keep talking about it. Uh, the second goal is seven hundred thousand, and once we get to seven hundred thousand, we're gonna everybody's gonna get a keychain. So I want everyone to get a keychain, uh, and I want everyone to get a keychain quick so that we can decide what the next stretch goal is. Uh, some people are saying they want a Kyle Ritter bonus cash bonus stretch goal. Okay, we can do that. We can get Kyle Ritter uh, a cash bonus stretch goal. Uh, absolutely. Let's uh, let's get to seven hundred thousand and determine where that is. Uh, Cyberfrog, Unforgettable Tales, one and two. This campaign just keeps on ticking. Uh, one hundred and sixty-seven thousand five hundred seventy-nine dollars. Thank you guys. These books are going to be shipping out before July. Uh, that is uh, that is very very. I cannot wait until these books are in my hands. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, those of you who have not read, uh, who want to read Cyberfrog uh, Wreck Planet, but have not read Blood Honey yet. Uh, don't worry, uh, we do have, uh, the links are in the description below, but we do have a uh, an eBay store. Uh, Andrea basically runs it, uh, and on this eBay store, you know, choose what you want. We've got Cyberfrog Blood Honey, uh, the team-up cover. You can get Cyberfrog Blood Honey, the team-up variant, plus the Ashcan set in one. Uh, you can get the Cyberfrog Ashcan set alone. Uh, you can do that. As you can see, they're selling uh, like crazy right now. Cyberfrog Wreck Planet, J. Lee uh, poster. Uh, 21 sold. We've only got four of those left. If you want a Jay Lee Rack Planet poster, you better hurry up. Uh, and uh, this is for retailers. 10 copies of Cyberfrog Blood Honey team up cover uh, signed uh, for one low shipping price. Uh, we'll ship out uh, 10 copies of that book to your store. And I'm telling you, uh, these people are like, hey, Ethan, uh, yeah, but comics gate books, they're not doing good on the secondary market. They're not doing good on the secondary market. You know, what do you, yes, they are. Uh, they're they're doing great on the secondary market. Uh, of course they are. I want to show you something real quick. Uh, you know, I offered a tier. Let me get a drink really quick here. I feel a little, a little dry. A little dryness happens, and then you start coughing right before, when you talk too much. Yes, they are. Uh, they're selling great. We had a tier at Cyberfrog Blood Honey that you could buy Cyberfrog Blood Honey Chromium in bulk. A few people did that. One of those guys, one of those smart investors bought like 100, 200 copies of it. Uh, he's had his, uh, look at it. He bought them for $25 a piece. He's selling them for $45 a piece. He sold 39 of them. This guy's practically doubled his money. 
Uh, he's doubled his money on Cyberfrog Blood Honey. Uh, purchased a lot of them. He's selling them on mass. Uh, by the way, this guy I checked. I was like, "What is this guy? He's a comic skater. Like he bought a bunch of uh, he bought a bunch of Cyberfrog stuff. He's selling out of that stuff pretty quickly. He also bought a few Lone Stars, and he has not been able to sell them. He invested in Lone Star, and he cannot move them. But he's moving the hell out of the Cyberfrog Blood Honey Chromium cover. If you want a copy of the Chromium cover. Now, he does have six more at $45 each. Uh, so, uh, yes, he is a scalper. This is the secondary market, but this just proves. It just goes to show, you know, he's selling them for almost twice what he paid for them, and he's not having a problem selling them. Not at all. Uh, he's almost sold out of them here. So, uh, good for him. Uh, you know, go with God via con Dios, you know, all those things. We want to we wanna see that happening. That just proves that our comics hold up in value. And honestly... If he held on to those for another year, he'd do much, much, much better. Uh, much better. Amateur Ant says, Ron, you can buy mine whenever I get them. LOL. I don't know what that refers to. I guess I missed a, I must have missed something here. Comic Books in Cahoots says, Cecil, got to sell more cash grab than he did. Cecil is a lazy mastermind, Ethan. Keep showing him how to do it, and he'll never work again. So you're saying I should stop helping Cecil? You're saying I should stop helping him and and, and see if he'll do it himself? All right, I'm going to open up the referrals page and see. Now, I, I lectured Cecil. I said, I need you. Uh, I need you to do me a favor, and I need you to sell a few more copies of Cyberfrog. It's not that I need you to. It's not about money. It's about it's about pride. And he said, well, you know, <laughs> I don't know what he said, but here's why. Uh, these are the referrals. My number one refer, that's me, Mortal V. We're going to go down here. You can see your names. Mortal V, look at him. He sold 58 copies of Cyberfrog for me. If this were grit, he'd have a bicycle. If we were selling grit, uh, this guy would get a machine gun or whatever it is that they used to give his prizes. Uh, Tommy Sarkinen, who wakes up every single day, gets on Twitter and starts posting out links to all of the Comic Skate campaigns. You know, I mean, this is a real dedication. Uh, Tommy, thank you so much. For, nobody's thanking you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for everything that you do, because this really does matter. I can see that you've sold 22 copies of Cyberfrog for me, uh, and God only knows what you've done for everyone else. Your dedication, you waking up in the morning, uh, posting those links on Twitter every single day might seem repetitive to you, uh, maybe to others, uh, but you've made me $3,000. I can see a three and a comma. I can't see the whole amount. I mean, that's gigantic. Thank you so much for that. Lloyd Douglas, 24 copies. John Malin, hail John Malin, sold five copies of Cyberfrog for me. And made, and by the way, it's not just the number that you sold, it's the amount. He raised me, I think it, that looks like it says 1,800. Hail John Malin. And then under John Malin's Doug Tenaple, for some reason. Doug Tenaple was able to sell six copies, 800 and something dollars. And here's Cecil. Still, even after I talked to him today, here is Cecil. Cecil. You cannot let this happen. Cecil, so, somebody has to click through one of your links on my campaign. You have to, you cannot let Doug Tenable, Doug Tenable sold $830 worth of Cyberfrog books for me. $830. Doug could have shipped out the rest of his international uh, hardcovers for that. Couldn't he have? Maybe, maybe not. Some of them, some of the 108 uh, might've gotten their books shipped out. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Cecil, on the other hand, uh, 600 Cecil, you got it. You got to beat Doug. You got to Brian Criscow of six gun gorilla. Thank you so much. Brian Criscow pan boy. Hail pan boy. $620 from pan boy. Six copies sold because pan boy told people, uh, pan boy told people uh, to, to back uh cyber frog rec planet. And so people did, uh, this guy hates my guts, but he talks about me so much. This is the thing. You talk about me so much that people go and buy my book. You understand, Doug, Hiroji V, whatever you talk about me, and people buy my stuff. Johnny Boy, hail Johnny Boy. Uh, you know, beam from pop, beam from pop. It's my favorite thing that he does. Sold four copies. Adam Post, thank you, Adam Post. Thank you, Antonio Bryce. Thank you, Cody Fernandez, Arch Geek, Eric Weathers, Kyle Ritter, Matt Wanger, Nasser Rabati. Thank you, Nasser Rabati. Liam Gray, Row, hail Row, uh, sold 300 copies for me. Alexandra Kim. Uh, $300 worth of copies, I should say. Michael Bancroft, hail Michael Bancroft. 
Trevor Nickel, Debbie Tucci, thank you so much. And now we're down to these guys sold one copy each. Uh, these guys, uh, Edwin Boyette, hail Edwin Boyette. Oh, uh, you know, appreciate that. Two hundred and twenty dollars. Thank you so much uh, for filling my pockets, uh, as you say. Appreciate uh, all of the denigration that you do that makes me rich. Uh, Literature Devil, thank you so much. Clint uh, Stoker, Pixel Trader, uh, Umbrella Guy, Dan Fraga, uh, Narwell, Ryan Butler, uh, and these RT Bear. I'm not sure I know him. RT Bear, Adam Friended, uh, Carlo Rowe, Unranked Chevron. Thank you so much, Unranked Chevron, for talking shit and making me some money. Preston Poulter, talk shit, makes me some money. It doesn't work the other way around, unfortunately. Michael Kritzer, Nikki Angler, Vinny T, uh, Michael Derrick, The God Things. Doc Hogg, uh, Preston Acevedo, Justin Scheller, uh, all you guys. Uh, thank you so much for uh, Von Klaus, too. Thank you so much. Piper, thank you. Uh, you guys are helping me and supporting CyberFrog. I just want to give you guys shout outs. Uh, and just say thanks for, uh, you know, thanks for doing it. Now, in the meantime, Cecil, get with it. You know, you of all people, you should be selling more uh, cyber fraud comic books for me as I sell cash grab for you. That's all I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> let me see here. Uh, David uh, David Bowser says, Mike's auction stream is so sad. Right now, there's only like 50 people in there and his mods, uh, only his mods are bidding on anything. Uh, that is uh, that is sad indeed. Uh, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, let me see. Uh, what version of Blood Honey will you include in the Blood Honey box? So, um, Austin K uh, Kaiser, thanks for asking. Um, what it's going to be is it's going to be a second printing uh, called Ultimate Blood Honey Silver Edition. Uh, I am making uh, I'm making a second printing where the cover is just going to be silver. It's going to be it's not going to be chromium. It's going to be foil, and Cyberfrog is going to be embossed and popping out of the cover a little bit. Uh, it's going to contain Cyberfrog, uh, you know, Blood Honey, and it's going to contain Cyberfrog 1998, uh, The Diary of Heather Swain, uh, all as one big book, 80 pages of story. I'm going to keep eight pages of sketches and covers and things like that in the back. Uh, it's going to be beautiful. So, uh, you know, that's what I'm going to include if you want to. I'm also going to include a version that doesn't have it in it if you don't want to spend the extra money for another edition of Cyberfrog Blood Honey, which makes sense. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, ER says, uh, if you were 1970s Green Lantern and Meyer was G.I. Joe, then Cecil is Casper. No offense to Cecil, uh, but there's a style difference. Maybe Cecil should be more like Cherry Pop-Tart. That's an interesting uh, Cherry Pop-Tart. Hmm. Um, all right, let me see. And we could check in on Mike's auction stream. Uh, I don't want to, though. Uh, Wolf campaign is Comicscape. War campaign is Comicscape. I, I, peace. I 100% agree. Everyone is comic skate. If you say you're comic skate, you are comic skate. It looks like there's a squabble going on in the chat. Uh, Cecil uh, Cecil says me two dollars and says you are my largest concern. Ethan Cecil, make sure that I'm a bigger concern for you. Uh, David, uh, let's see. Aquarium says Ethan, can you recap comic skate? I'm new to the scene. Oh shit! <laughs> recap comic skate. Uh. All right, so Comicsgate is a consumer movement. Uh, Comicsgate started because Marvel Comics, uh, over time, uh, opened the door to left-wing activists. Um, le left-wing activists work in this way, and they work in this way in all hobbies. Um, they say, nice hobby that you have. It's a little bit sexist, don't you think? Nice industry. Seems a bit racist. Seems a bit, Mostly it's sexist. Seems a bit sexist. And you go, and, and the guys of this hobby, it's usually male-dominated hobbies that feminists want to conquer. They go, it is? You, we're sexist? Yes, it is sexist. Uh, maybe you better let us in to fix it. Uh, and then inevitably, uh, you know, weak males within this male-dominated hobby let feminists in. Feminists proceed to let more feminists in uh, who basically take over and begin to ruin out of the politeness and soy-based weakness, the cowardice uh, of the simps and cucks uh, that work within the comic book industry. Uh, they allowed people like Gail Simone uh, to say, stop killing women and shoving them in refrigerators and let me work. Let me write comics and uh, change the entire face of what goes on. And before you know it, uh, you have people who have no business writing or, or, or drawing or doing anything, making decisions for comics in editorial. Uh, you have them letting leftists in 
who have one simple agenda, and their agenda, uh, their agenda is to smash the patriarchy. It isn't to make good comics. And you let these weirdos in here with one single agenda to take down the patriarchy. Oh my goodness, the patriarchy. Let's let these gender studies weirdos uh, in here uh, to basically lecture the men who are enjoying this wonderful uh, thing that we're we're working in, we're making money in, we're selling comics to each other. This is a hobby we've all been uh, in for 30 years. It wasn't made for you, gender study, gender neutral weirdo. It wasn't made for you, bitch. It wasn't made for you. Fucking feminist scum. It wasn't made for you. You had no business coming in here and ruining it. You did it out of cruelty. You did it out of cynicism. You killed the comic book industry and you weak ass fat beard cucks who let her come in here. Let these bitches come in here and make changes and kill Marvel Comics and kill DC Comics and make it unhospitable, make it, uh, you know, uninteresting. Uh, tell the fans that they're Nazis if they don't like their characters being destroyed, uh, which is what happened. They broke. They broke all these characters that people had invested so much of their money, so much of their time in. You know, when you're a comic book fan, you're addicted to comics. You love the comics. You love these characters. You've been reading them for years and years and years. You have people who are specialists, creators, uh, who have generated this illusion, this wonderful illusion that you can buy into. And I started buying into it at 75 cents a pop. I'd find three quarters and I'd go to the drugstore and I'd buy a copy of Iron Man, you know, by uh, just Bob Layton, Bob Layton covers. Just uh, wonderful, a wonderful world that was that was real. It was so real. And you let people, and their only agenda was just to tell good stories. And you let, you let feminists come in here. You let SJWs come in here. And they let more of them come in here. And they turn the comic book industry from an entertainment franchise for young men and some women who liked it the way that it was, but mostly young men, overwhelmingly, 95% young men. And these weirdos open the door for more weirdos who don't care, who think comic books are stupid, who think you're stupid and a sexist and a bigot, basically wanted to drive you out of your own hobby, uh, wanted to get in there, wanted to uh, basically take over uh, books that were actually establishing pop culture, were establishing the culture for young men. What does it mean to be a young man? What what does masculinity look like? What does it mean? What are the virtues of masculinity? What are they? Well, they're all in these comics. They're all in these comics we've been reading. We all aspire to be Tony Stark. We all aspire to be Captain America. I want to be Batman. I want to be Superman. I'm just me. I'm, I'm just me. But what? look, this is an example of what it means to be a man. And you've got creepy feminists who hate men. You've got these people. You've got these bitches. They hate men. They can't stand men. They are misandrists. They don't understand anything about what it means to be masculine. They call it toxic masculinity. And they call you a bigot, a sexist, a racist. They call you a Nazi. And they get to get into these positions to change these stories around to uh, reinvent and reestablish, theoretically, uh, for a, a new generation of uh, young people, what it means to be a man. And these people have no business. These weirdos, these cat ladies, these creeps have no business trying to tell you uh, what it means to be a man, trying to tell anybody what it means to be a man. So that is, uh, that's where we are right now. Uh, we've got crazy people. Uh, who have uh, invaded comics and ruined them. Uh, the comic book industry has become so weakened, so afraid of its own shadow at this point. Nobody wants to speak out. Speaking out the way I'm speaking out now uh, means that people are going to uh, are going to be like, oh my goodness, oh, I better denounce Ethan. I better denounce this new speech because uh, even though I know he's right, even though uh, he is 100% absolutely right about this problem, I do not want to be attacked by cat ladies on Twitter. I'm afraid of the blue-haired land whale. I'm afraid of that blue-haired land whale. I'm fucking Ahab. I'm Captain Ahab of the blue-haired uh, land whale. Fuck them. Tell the truth. This industry means something. This hobby means something to so many people. You be Captain Ahab too. Tell the truth. 
Black Dragon. Hashtag Black Dragon Comics Gate. Tell the truth. Don't be afraid of these people. Talk about it. Talk about what's gone wrong. Because if you don't talk about it, and if you're afraid, just to avoid having people call you Nazi on Twitter, which means nothing, it means absolutely nothing, then this hobby, which has sustained and entertained so many generations of young men and a few young women, a few crazy young women, ladies, I love you, over the years will be gone for good. Now, I'm afraid the comics as we have understood them are dead. The comic book industry as we have known it is dead. The, the direct market isn't coming back the way it was. But comic books are you. Comic book, The comic book industry is you. It's you guys. It's your wallets. It's your imaginations. It's, it's on us. If we're not going to fix this, nobody is. And they're going to sit there and sputter. Uh, they're going to drive the rest of what. It's all going down. It's all going down into the ground. They're going to sit there and go, it was because of COVID. We don't know what happened. It's just suddenly COVID happened. and comment. No. Social justice warriors happened. Left-wing activists came in and decided to, uh, decided to take over this industry, spit in your faces, and destroy what you loved. Wake up. That is what happened to the industry, to the hobby that you cherished. Left-wing activists came in, fucked it up, spit in your faces, and laughed. None of these comics that they're creating is, are worth anything. Every single generation of comic book creator, uh, every single generation of comic books has had classic tales come out of it. I was of the last generation. I was of the last pre-SJW generation, and I let it. Wizard Magazine called me the number one comic book artist. Number one hottest comic book artist from 2005 to 2007, I was there. What's under my belt? Green Lantern Rebirth, classic. Sinestro Corps, classic. Flash Rebirth, classic. Three classics. Three indispensable classics that I got to be a part of. There aren't any more. What classic stories are coming out of the social justice warrior generation of comics? Nothing. What is this industry known for right now? This industry is known for uh, ridiculously over-the-top insulting stories that focus entirely on the identity of the characters uh, therein. Uh, are you, uh, and not the secret identities. No, no, no. No, that would be interesting. We're not worried about secret identities anymore. We're worried about identity politics. Are you gay? Are you black? Uh, are you a woman? Are you transgendered? These are the things that matter. These are the things that matter in the superhero stories you're being fed right now. And then they applaud each other. Iceman is gay now. Bobby Drake is gay since when? Since when is Bobby Drake gay? Is that what Stan Lee would have said? No, Stan Lee said he's not gay. Suddenly he is gay. Now there's an article in the New York Times and everybody goes. <laughs> and I'd be like this too if it sold any more comics, but it doesn't sell comics. Oh, we got to represent more people. Why don't you entertain people? Why don't you stop applauding yourself for acknowledging that the world uh, looks different than maybe you do? Why don't you also, while you're at it, uh, stop trying to tell black people what their superheroes should look like and act like? Whitey, whitey, cracker ass. You SJWs, you weird white boy SJWs, you're out there. Um, uh, this is a, uh, uh, every black character is a super genius. Everyone is just really smart and they're not mean. Uh, they're not tough. Uh, they listen to the women on the team. Uh, uh, they are gender, uh, gender neutral, most of them bisexual. Stop it. Just stop. Stop it. All this stuff is just collapsing all around them. It's the, it's the weirdest thing. Comicscape was here uh, 2016, 2017. Some very brave people on YouTube stepped up uh, and in blogs, and they started complaining about it. They started to take note. They started to notice it. It was too late. By the time, by the time people started to notice it, it was too late. It was over already. Even you know, It was still going. Zombie comic book industry, but it was too late. By the time you're apologizing to a crazy hairdresser, 
for a story that Ron Mars, another SJW, wrote in the 90s. By the time you're trying to change the fantasy dynamic of the young males who read your comics for the sake of who? For what? For politics. Politics is downstream from culture. Whatever comic books are teaching our young men, eventually that's the way they're going to vote. So we got to get in there, got to change comics, got to change television, got to change movies, got to change video games. If we can change the way people think, if we can make people believe that uh, one-armed transgendered women won World War II, we can probably get them to vote for some fucking weirdo in 10 years. So this is Comicsgate. By the time Comicsgate noticed it, it was too late. Comicsgate fought hard, warned Marvel Comics. Retailers stood up in 2017. You guys don't remember this. 2017 Marvel Retailer Conference. Some brave retailers stood up and said, I can't sell this shit. You're changing Thor into a woman. I can't sell it. Where is Bruce Banner? Who is this little Asian kid who enjoys being the Hulk? Fuck this. I can't sell it. I can't sell it. You're killing my store. I can't sell these comics. Can't sell them. And you know what Marvel did? Marvel made fun of them. Called them bigots. Said, we hear you. You're saying you don't like women. Well, we're going to keep doing what we're doing anyway. And it was over. It was over at that point. It was just over. The comic book industry was dead. Crazy people. Uh, began to identify troublemakers uh, and work within Whisper Network campaigns to get them removed from the comic book industry. I was one of them. Mitch Breitweiser was another one. John Malin was another one. We stood up. We said, yay, Trump won. Hooray, it's our turn. It's our turn to have a representative in the White House. They said, we're going to fuck you up. Uh, and that's what they did. We didn't even know what hit us. And we didn't understand. We didn't understand how deeply entrenched this political, this activist movement, movement of leftists actually was, how powerful they were, how well organized uh, they were. And they organized to get us removed from the mainstream so our voices wouldn't be heard. We wouldn't be represented and we couldn't stop them from doing what they were doing. They're organized. These people are organized. They know exactly what they're doing. You want to know why Star Wars is the way it is? Same reasons, same people, video games, same people, same people. So uh, that's what Comicsgate is. Now, uh, Comicsgate is made up of a lot of people, a lot of customers. It's 90, 99% customers. Uh, I'm one of the creators. I'm, I'm one of the voices of Comicsgate. I have a YouTube channel. Uh, I'm pretty good at yelling and screaming. Uh, so people listen to me, people tune in. Cyberfrog Blood Honey, big hit, big gigantic hit, scared the piss out of the mainstream. They thought they'd canceled me and destroyed my life. They tried to get me to kill myself. They were hoping I would. They identified every part of my past. Uh, they uh, doxed me a hundred times over. They doxed every aspect of my life and made it part of the public discourse because I voted for Trump and because I didn't just lay down and die. I stood up with others, and we built this. If left-wing radicals get to decide who can work in comics, if left-wing radicals will attack and harass anyone who supports our comics, which they do, then we have to build something new. We have to actually build something in which they have no power over us. We have to build a new industry that's SJW-proof, and that is what this is. That's what we're doing here. So uh, me as a creator, as a comic skater, somebody who uh, pretty much uh, had my life run through the mill for my politics, for my own views and beliefs, for my charm and charisma, my elegance, my eloquence. Uh, I've had to do this with others. I've had to pick up the indie comics movement again. Had to go right back to, to ground zero. Uh, that's where uh, that's where I created Cyberfrog. I was 19 years old. I had a comic book called Cyberfrog. And I did it uh, as practice, as a way to break into the mainstream comic book industry. And I broke into the mainstream comic book industry after four or five years of working on Cyberfrog independently. 
from my home at age 19 to DC Comics at age 24, 25. And uh, worked at DC Comics for 20 years, and now it's right back to Cyberfrog again, right back to the indies, right back to the minors. I learned a lot working at DC Comics. I learned a lot. I worked with some of the best writers. I worked with some of the best talent. I worked with some of the best editors. Some people who who taught me what it means to be a hero, what it what it means to tell a superhero story. Those people, they just don't matter anymore. You know, these editors don't matter anymore. They're irrelevant now. They're irrelevant. They're irrelevant because left-wing activists have redefined what comic books should be doing. They're all supposed to be political. Comic books have always been political, they say, as an excuse to turn your hobby into a pamphleteering exercise in socialism. Uh, They're liars. They're liars. But I learned a lot. I learned a lot from these people. I learned how to tell stories. I learned I learned what it means to be a hero. I learned what it means to tell superhero stories. I learned from some of the best. Come back to the indies. Start crowdfunding uh, Cyberfrog Blood Honey, and it makes a million dollars while the comic book industry is collapsing. Now the mainstream industry uh, in its position uh, is scared pissless of us. We are immune to COVID-19. We're immune to them. We're immune to all manner of disease. Uh, We will continue to put out our comic books. We will continue to fund our comic books. The indie scene is rising up like it's never risen since the 1980s in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We are crushing it right now. We are uh, the subject of uh, awe. Uh, We are the subject of hatred. We are, uh, I think we're past the subject of ridicule. We went through that. That's over with now. You ain't laughing anymore, are you, you fucking bitches? Uh, we are we are huge. We are Comicsgate. Uh, we offer an opportunity to anyone uh, who places the needs of customers and telling good stories over their own politics. We are customers first in content, word and deed. Your books need to not insult the people who are reading them. You need to be kind to and, and defer to your customers, and you need to make sure that your books. Uh, come out safely. You need to practice, you know, good customer service. You need to make sure your books arrive safely. Uh, that's what Comicsgate is. You come over here. You use the hashtag. You say you're Comicsgate. Uh, you believe in those things. You follow those principles. You abide by those principles. Keep politics. Keep divisive politics and religion out of your conversation. We don't do that. I don't do that anymore. I used to be like Trump. Trump. I don't do that anymore. We don't talk about it. Uh, I could have changed. Maybe I'm a Democrat now. You don't know. You don't know. It's none of your business. My politics are nobody's business. I should have known that. I should have known that back then. I didn't know that. Now I understand that. I'm just Uncle Ethan, Human Sunbeam, Comic Skate is Caligula, Ethan Van Skyver, EVS, whatever you want to call me. Uh, I'm the creator of Cyberfrog. I'm your friend here on YouTube. Uh, I'm somebody who uh, works on these uh, Cyberfrog stories at your whim, at your pleasure. I appreciate you allowing me the opportunity to do this. When you back Cyberfrog, uh, you strengthen and empower me uh, to be able to continue to make YouTube videos, uh, to be able to continue to speak out against these people, uh, and to continue to uh, to make Cyberfrog comics, which I want to do until I die. I never want to go back to the mainstream, ever, ever. I don't think the mainstream is going to exist. I think we're the mainstream now. How could we not be the mainstream? What other than respecting customer, respecting your customers, defines being mainstream? I'll never understand that. So <laughs> that's Comicsgate. That is Comicsgate right now, guys. Uh, and uh, if you're not a part of it, I don't know why. If you're not a part of it, uh, you have different ideas. You have some strange ideas about what comics should be. Uh, those ideas may align with the uh, the people who are responsible for destroying the comic book industry. Customers first, content word and deed. Uh, that's what we're all about. We're still here. We're going to be here next year too. We'll be here the year after that and the year after that because we're sturdy. That's it. We can survive all this. We don't need. There's no point of attack. the The thing that that made us uh, that made things difficult before. Uh, was that there were people, like if I'm working for DC Comics, if I'm working for anyone else, uh, then SJWs will attack that institution and get me fired. 
That's what SJWs do. They mobilize, they write letters, they attack. Now, I'm not working for anybody but me and you. So there's nobody to attack. You can attack me all you want. I will laugh. I will laugh. I will point out your attacks. I will uh, we'll make a we'll make a show out of it. We'll have a good time. Uh, I will sell you more copies of Cyberfrog. I will ship I will ship them to you. You will get them. There's nobody in between you and me. Zero pipeline distribution. Nobody to attack. There's no point of attack anymore. That's why they're so frustrated. SJWs have no power over Comicsgate. Left-wing activists have no power over Comicsgate over you and I. We can do this forever. So I, I do invite you, if you're a creator, I invite you to be to use the hashtag to join this community, to meet other creators within Comicsgate, become Comicsgate, declare that you're Comic, uh, Comicsgate loud and proud, accept what comes from it. People are going to attack you for it. Be brave, be true, stand up for it. The people who are attacking you are the demons, literal like mentally ill weirdos uh, who destroyed the comic book industry for the sake of politics and their own personal agenda which is smash the patriarchy. You know, they placed smashing the patriarchy. That was their agenda. That's what took away your comic book industry. Um, do it loud and proud. Be, a, be part of Comicsgate, meet other people. If you're a customer, I invite you to invest in Comicsgate books. I ask you to. I don't invite you to. I ask you to. Please do. Please do find a Comicscape project on Indiegogo that you like. Support that creator. Read the book. Talk about the book. Uh, we've changed the way comics are done. I mean, we're you know I'm, I think of myself as uh, I'm, I'm using kind of a J.K. Rowling method of comic books. Harry Potter books came out infrequently, maybe two a year. People were anticipating them. They're oversized. Uh, they're special when they come out. They're special. Cyberfrog campaigns are special. They're infrequent. Uh, they don't need to come out every month. Uh, they're $25 to read the book and get all the extra stuff, all the cool extra stuff that comes with it. Uh, and I'll hit you up again uh, when I'm ready to put out the, put out the next one. It's going to be part of a much larger story. Um, but that is, uh, that's the new model for comic books, I think. I think that's the way things are going to go. I'm proud of us. <clears throat> I think we did great stuff. I think we're, I think comics gate is the way of the future. And I, you know, I hear from retailers uh, and I hear from other publishers that they envy our model. Uh, all right, let me read some super chats. Wow, a lot of super chats came in during that. Uh, Wiggle Wiggle says, please check out Kevin Sharp's Dragon Guard. Michael Beacon says, when Wokies call something an ist, they mean Neil. Comic Books and Kahoot says, uh, hobbies lead to nerds, nerds lead to simps, simps lead to feminists, feminists lead to suffering. Uh, the Unrelenting Male says, I just backed your book. Oh, thank you. Amateur Ant says, hail Nasser, hail Doug, hail Smiller. And then laughing faces. Uh, Number Lock says, uh, our numlocks says maybe ultimate gold wrecked planet and blood honey box. Uh, no, we're not going to do the ultimate uh, wrecked planet uh, yet. It's, you know, we still haven't put out the regular wrecked planet. Uh, ER says, I just love what you just said. Keep saying it. Thanks. ER. Uh, Darth Cisco says cash grab will come out in two years when Cecil works out a deal with a chain of check cashing places. <laughs> It'll still be only five pages. Sorry. That was great. Uh, Toxic Man Baby says, Ethan, did you see that we got 200K? Hail Caesar. Yeah, I did see it. Congratulations, Toxic Man Baby. You're talking about Raging Golden Eagle and you guys is your efforts. Uh, congratulations. Uh, you know, you, you are absolutely the best. That's called uh, Blade Devil uh, on Indiegogo past 200K. Uh, so pleased. Amateur Ant says, back uh, Red Rooster, heart of the Walmart. Uh, the great Renzine says, had to back the honeycomb box. Couldn't resist any longer not having it in my Cyberfrog collection. Resistance is futile, my comics gay friends. Hail, Caesar. Hail. Well, hail, great Renzine. Thank you so much for doing that. Uh, Tempertone says, hey, EVS, can you tell Zach to add the masks and dog tags as perks? Why do buyers have to buy the merch and comics separately on the same campaign? I'll run it by him. I'm sure there's a reason. Grantee's Nut says, you should play the Now You're a Man song by DVDA. Now you're a man. A man, man. There's nothing wrong with being a man. Why are they afraid of masculinity? Uh, why are these bitches afraid of men? You know, we're, we've been good to women for generations. Uh, they shouldn't be afraid of us. They should cherish masculinity. Cherish men. Men are cool. It's cool to be us. Uh, let me see here. Uh, number one Marvel fan says, everyone at Disney in charge, our SJW, all productions are female. Uh, they even say on the Disney Channel, they don't like men around. Too macho. It's crazy now. Uh, number one reason why Marvel comics are getting away with this BS. 
Uh, Russell Hall says, oh, fine. Fuck it. I'll buy your stupid frog comic. I was waiting for Cecil to sell it to me. Thanks, Russell. Everyone's buying Cyber Frog now. You mean I just have to lecture? I just have to give a speech like that and I sell frog comics? I feel like I'm boring you guys when I do that. But I, it, it means a lot to me. Comicscape means everything to me. I take it very seriously. It's my life mission to, to save comics. Not to save the comic book industry. Not to save those characters. To save comics. Make it possible for you to do comics if you want to do them and actually succeed. Make it possible for myself uh, to do comics. Uh, make it possible for my friends to do comics. Uh, let's see. Uh, Micah Curtis says, crazy listening to that speech and going back in time. Glad you became Comics Kid Ethan. You're a good friend. Uh, I'm with you until the end, buddy. Thank you, Micah Curtis. Me too. I'm sorry I've been busting your balls today, but uh, something's funny about it. Sorry about that. Uh, Risky Analysis says, some say feminists culturally appropriate uh, masculine culture and interests in an attempt to destroy what agrees aggrieves them, uh, femininity, because their own ideals of feminine seem unachievable to them. Uh, that's interesting, too. Yeah, they want to just kind of blur it and make it sort of not, there is no gender. Everyone is just sort of some kind of salamander fish creature. I don't, I don't know what you call it. Uh, Gabriel Figueroa says, SJWs are useful idiots for commies. Uh, and corrupt corporations and politicians to socially engineer weak soy boys who consume and surrender. Uh, yeah, corporations become corrupted. I, I don't believe in. I don't believe in SJW uh, uh, corporations. Corporations that intend to become SJW. Uh, SJWs converge on corporations, take over human resources, and then control corporations and then allow themselves into positions of power that's what happened to disney it's what happened to star wars it's what happened to marvel uh this is the way it works you know sjw's get in there and take control using their identities using grievance politics uh you know all this stuff using hashtag me too uh they take over dominate uh and change the rules of corporations and they make them not about profit these people the the, the main problem that corporations should understand about social justice warriors is that they're anti-capitalist. You know, and I've said this before and it's upset people. I've said, look, if SJW comics sold, I'd be like, okay. Like if those sold better than normal people comics, I'd be like, okay, I guess we got to do it. We got to go where the money is. If there's an audience out there that wants this pap, uh, then it would be, uh, it would be behoove us to actually produce SJW comics because those are the people with the money. They don't sell. Uh, they don't sell. SJWs do not even buy the shit that they insist on. They don't make the shit that they make. They don't want it. They know better than that. They think it's stupid. They're like, we already know this shit. We're trying to sell it to you. And you read it and you spit it out because it's poison. So uh, despite the fact that Iceman did not sell, despite the fact that America Chavez doesn't sell, none of these books actually sell, put up numbers. Social justice warriors do not sell comics. Despite that fact, they still exist and proliferate. Why? What is the reason for that? Why do they still exist when they don't sell? These people are anti-capitalist. They do not care about money. They are not motivated by money. Every choice that I make for Cyberfrog, on some level, is about money. It's about how can I how can I appeal to more people? How can I sell more cyber fraud comics to more people? How can I do that? Uh, it's business. It's comics is business and entertainment. People want to be entertained. People will pay to be entertained. Once you know that, once you understand that, uh, we become hot dog merchants. That's what we compare ourselves to. A lot of comic book professionals see themselves as celebrities. Comic skaters need to beat that out of their heads. You can have an ego. I do. Uh, but uh, you have to remember that you are nothing without your customers. Absolutely nothing. Uh, you know, uh, if, if, if you guys stop buying my comics, I'm on the streets. Uh, therefore, uh, I'm a hot dog salesman. Hot dogs here. Get your hot dogs. Get your uh, cotton candy. You want a soda pop with that? What is it that you want? My hot dogs are better than that guy's hot dogs over there. You should be buying my hot dogs. You have a problem with my hot dogs? Then I'll make you a different kind of hot Whatever it is, you got to be a hot dog merchant out there selling your product humbly. You don't have to know anything about me. You don't need to know. When somebody sells you hot dogs at a ballpark, do you ask who they voted for? Do you know? Do they ask you? It's none of your business. That is the relationship. You're selling a tasty, fun product uh, to customers who are willing to pay for the experience. Uh, do not ruin it for them. Do not ruin it for yourself. Uh, that is... Uh, 
that is a comic state hashtag comic state. Uh, let me see here. Some, uh, I read that one, read that one, read that one. Uh, Zugi one says, yo, still waiting on that Sal head sketch. You said possibly Wednesday. Was there a delay? Just asking. Also, I was drinking last time we talked. Did you contact dynamite over the vampire poster? Or am I too? Uh, yes. Contacted dynamite, uh, your Sal sketch. I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, it's coming, Zugi. It is coming. You're on the list. You're getting one. Number one Marvel fan says, Preach, buddy. I agree 100%. It all came up so fast. Just destroyed our pop culture. Uh, you see it change at cons within five years. Uh, guys like us have to fight and have thick skin because they will attack. Kumquats420 says, Thanks for the Rumblebee trading card, Uncle E. You betcha. Uh, Danny Grimm says, Is a new member and will receive a Rumblebee trading card. Go to the community tab of the YouTube page. Go find the instructions and we'll mail you a Rumblebee trading card. Aquarum says, Thanks, E. Just bought my first comic ever, Wreck Planet. Well, that's exciting. We're, you know, a lot of people who are buying uh, Comicscape books and Cyberfrog are people who have never read a comic book before in their lives, uh, but they're curious. They like my story about myself personally, maybe. Uh, and also, the character looks damn cool. Uh, it's okay for your kids if your kids are 10, 11, 12. Uh, it's okay for uh, your kids. It's going to be a little bit bloody. Uh, but, uh, you know, look at the video games these kids play. Uh, too Fat for the Straight Jacket says, wasn't paying attention. Can you sum up Comicsgate again? Rewind it and listen. Uh, Mark Littlewood says, uh, when may we get Cyberfrog Monthly or CG Universe? Uh, Cyberfrog Monthly is probably never going to happen. Uh, it's going to be a, an event comic. Uh, I just don't believe in monthly comics right now. Uh, I would much rather uh, do a little mini movie. I would see my Cyberfrog books as movies. And I'd like to put them out once a year or twice a year. Uh, Comic Skate Universe, there isn't one. I mean, the, you know, we're all individuals. Uh, it might well be that some of us choose to band together and do business with one another and create some kind of Comic Skate Universe, but it's not going to be universal. You know, uh, we all kind of uh, are invited to do our own uh, our own thing and become our own little businesses and publishing uh, publishing houses. Tudor Trash says, "Hail Caesar, take us to church. We laugh loudest." Uh, yeah, we are getting the last laugh, and it is the loudest. Uh, Grantee's Nuts says, Unforgettable Tales will go nicely in the Blood Honey box. That's a great idea, too. Uh, Jesus H. Christ uh, sent me uh, 10 Mexican pesos. Uh, Olay. Uh, David uh, Todorov says, Tell me what happened with the CG breakup, and I'll buy Cyberfrog tonight. I.e., Doug, Edwin. Uh, actually, I'll buy it regardless, but I've been absent a bit. Uh, okay, uh, um, let's see. Uh, Doug Tenaple uh, contacted me uh, in 2018 because he said that he'd lost his last gimmick. Doug Tenaple had come out against trans people. In a way, he disrespected a trans journalist uh, and dead named uh, this person uh, and called him a man, uh, you know, all this stuff. And uh, got in a lot of trouble and lost a contract with Scholastic. And Doug reached out to me and said, I need Comicsgate's help. I think I'm Comicsgate, you know. I want to be able to do what you guys are doing. So I brought Doug Tenaple over. Doug raised uh, $200,000 for his character, Bigfoot Bill. Uh, Comicsgate, he was on the show every single night. He raised a lot of money from uh, Comicsgate consumers. Once he got his Bigfoot Bill money, he said, I'm not using the Comicsgate hashtag anymore. Uh, see you later. And uh, it was for a bunch of reasons. It turned out Doug Tenaple basically just wanted an investment. He wanted us to pay. Doug Tenaple was in negotiations for Earthworm Jim, the uh, graphic novel rights, a character he created but lost when he was a kid. Let me get another drink. My throat's dry now. <clears throat> okay. So Doug Tenaple was in negotiations uh, for the graphic novel rights to Earthworm Jim, a character he created but didn't own. Uh, what Doug did own uh, was Doug owned video game rights. He was getting royalties. Didn't own the rights. He was getting royalties every month for uh, Earthworm Jim video game. Uh, and a new video game for, for Earthworm Jim was about to come out, meaning that he was going to be due a lot of royalties. So he negotiated with the owner of Earthworm Jim uh, to trade his royalties in perpetuity for the trade paperback rights or the graphic novel rights uh, to do Earthworm Jim comic books. Uh, now, that person was skeptical about Doug's politics, sure. Uh, but moreover, said, what will your book look like? Will it be quality? Uh, Doug didn't have the money, or Doug did have the money. Who knows? Uh, but Doug wanted us to pay for it. Doug wanted Doug created a character that looked just like Earthworm Jim called Bigfoot Bill. Uh, Doug needed to create a book to show the Earthworm Jim people what the Earthworm Jim graphic novel would look like. Okay, so he made us pay for it. 
<laughs> That's basically what it happened. What happened? And as soon as he got the money from us, and he published Bigfoot Bill, he spent every single penny on Bigfoot Bill. He he screwed over about a hundred and something backers. They never got their books. Uh, he didn't care. Uh, the entire point was to just show the Earthworm Jim people what the book would look like if he got the graphic novel rights. He swindled us. Uh, he got the graphic novel rights to Earthworm Jim, and then said he started attacking us because comic book. Uh, our comic skaters were like, why aren't you comic skate anymore? What do you mean? What happened? What did we do to you? We helped you. Why aren't you using the hashtag? Why aren't you a part of our community? And Doug just wanted us to go away. Doug's a multimillionaire. He didn't really need our money. Uh, he took our money because he didn't want to pay for his own books. Uh, so that caused a little bit of a rift uh, between comic skate uh, and Doug Tenaple. And uh, he didn't want to admit why he left he didn't want to admit that he used us, so he started to concoct reasons uh, why he left on moral for moral reasons, moral purposes. I left because Comics Gate's anti-Christian. Uh, they're not fighting the gays with me. He literally said this. He said Comics Gate needs to uh, Comics Gate is the Rainbow Brigade that I'm trying to fight. I thought I was joining manly men who would help me fight the gays. Uh, that's not what we do here. Obviously, that's the opposite of what uh, Comics Gate is. Uh, and he said a bunch of weird stuff like that. He began picking fights with people. And now it's just Doug Tenaple decided that he wanted to take down Comicsgate. So he's got a community of uh, like-minded people who uh, who he basically organizes to uh, cause trouble for Comicsgate, to set traps for us. Uh, weird, just weird shit. So that's Doug Tenaple. Uh Mike S. Miller, Edwin Boyette. Mike, Mike S. Miller uh, caused a lot of PR problems for Comicsgate. He is a troll. Uh, he's a troll in ways that I don't understand because he's a man who's deeply in debt. Uh, Mike S. Miller is badly, badly in debt. Uh, and uh, if he'd stuck around here and just uh, behaved himself like a comic skater, he probably would have pulled himself out of debt pretty handily. Uh, but he can't do that. Mike S. Miller has to picket people and insult entire groups of fans. Uh, comic skaters have to answer for him all the time. And his brothers and sisters didn't want to answer for him all the time. Uh, finally, uh, it, Mike, just one weird stunt after another, uh, Mike, uh, tried to, uh, he, he took a Mike Waringo sketch cover. He drew Lone Star over the original art and then forged Mike Waringo's signature, called it a, you know, the last Mike Waringo was a dead comic. He's deceased. He beloved and deceased called it, uh, Mike Waringo's last, uh, comic book cover, uh, infuriated Mike Waringo's, uh, still living brother. Uh, the entire comic book industry, and then Mike set seemed to set fire to the original art. Just horrible all the time. From Mike finally came out on, uh, uh, you know, May, I guess. It, when's Pride Month? June. Uh, and he said, uh, Pride is a sin. Mike is a Christian. And he wanted to poke uh, gay fans by saying that they were sinners. And I said to Mike, uh, you know, Mike, we don't we don't call our customers Nazis, and we don't tell them they're going to hell either. You don't do that. Uh, this caused an enormous rift where Mike signed up to be a part of Doug's campaign against Comicsgate. Uh, and Edwin Boyette, who seems to be in love with Mike or something, uh, followed Mike. Followed Mike. Uh, so that was an enormous rift. I call it the Comicsgate divorce, uh, where, you know, these, uh, frankly, uh, you know, um, the evangelical wing of Comicsgate left Comicsgate uh, and are doing their own thing. Uh, but we do not insult gay fans here. Gay fans have money. We want their money. We want them to buy their our books. Uh, they're welcome here. We don't want to make them feel unwelcome. Uh, we don't want to do that. Uh, and that's the reason why Mike S. Miller is not here anymore. All right. Uh, so <laughs> to go through all that stuff. Whew, exhausting. But I hope you understand. Um, uh, let's see here. Thanks for the Rumblebee trading card. E, got that. Um scrolling down okay jeremy's waffles thanks for 15 dollars. says peace is a lie there's only passion through passion I, I gain strength through strength i gain power through power i gain victory uh through victory my chains are broken comics gate shall free me wow uh, ryan magus thanks for five dollars uh, this was the best uvs comics gate rant i've heard in a while comics gate means so much to me and you remain its best voice uh hail caesar hail comics gate thanks ryan I appreciate that, but I'm losing my voice now, <laughs> like literally losing my voice. So I better kind of sign off. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Let's go through the, the uh, campaigns again. Understand that, you know, part of, uh, you know, 
every now and then I come on, I do these promotion streams. I, I want to mix them with entertainment. I want to talk to you guys. I want to tell you guys what's going on. I hope you had fun. If you're somebody new here, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, please join our community. Please be Comicsgate. Realize that you're you're probably Comicsgate. Uh, bravely use the hashtag. Join us. Learn what it's all about. Uh, and think about either starting your own campaign or supporting uh, these other independent creators because uh, this indie comics community uh, and this indie comics movement is strong. Uh, it's unique uh, and it's stood the test of time. It's stood a lot of slings and arrows. Uh, I know I have, I know Zach has, John Malin has, Cecil has, we all, uh, we all have. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's great to see that it means something, you know. Uh, what what is the end result? What is the end result of all of this? Uh, we get to do our own comics. Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar graphic novel. This is the third issue of Jawbreakers by your boy Zach uh, Richard C. Meyer, one of the founders of of Comics Gate. Uh, you would say one of the guys who was its best voice uh, during the time when it was uh, a living hell. I mean, it was just a living hell out there uh, with these lunatics uh, fighting for uh, dominion over the comic book industry. Uh, $22,904. That's what Zach gets within the uh, first few hours of his campaign. Uh, congratulations, Zach. Let's keep this pumping. Obviously, this campaign needs to get to six figures, and let's get it there quickly. Uh, thank you, guys. Link is in the description for that. Uh, Dan Fraga. Dan Fraga, one of the newest Comicsgate professionals, uh, realized he was Comicsgate. I had a, a couple phone conversations with Zach. I mean, with Zach, with Dan Fraga. Uh, and Dan Fraga was already talking about these SJWs kind of stepping into his life and then causing him trouble here and there. And uh, he realized he's comics gate too. So he's, uh, he's over here with his uh, new smash hit book, black flag, pineapple perception. Uh, he's been drawing, he, he drew black flag in the, in the 1990s when I was drawing cyber frog. So it's great to see it come back. Uh, you guys are supporting it to the tune of 85 or $88,536. Uh, keep keep backing it, guys. Let's get this campaign to six figures uh, ASAP. Uh, Cecil's cash grab. Here we go. Come on. Somebody back it. No. Okay. Cash grab. No. Uh, <laughs> that's a Cecil thing. Uh, back cash grab. Cecil's book is going to be hilarious. Great art by Donald DeLay. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Cecil, one of the most beloved voices when the comics gate. Uh, vestige number one, war campaign. Hail war campaign. Hail uh, the motherfucking brethren. War Campaign is a group of super fans uh, within Comicsgate who have decided to do their own comic book. And now uh, they're also going to do their own magazine uh, and a website called CG Only that's going to um, talk about Comicsgate books uh, that are, uh, you know, um, on Indiegogo that people can kind of shop and browse that way, learn about. Uh, Comicsgate Only, CG Only, and also CG Jumpstart. They're going to do a wizard magazine. Uh, style fanzine about comics gate can't wait for that uh this is their first book though written by gat hanzo uh, the wizard uh and also uh drawn by donald delay uh vestige is a huge huge success and uh one of uh, the best comics gate books that i've read i read it last night absolutely loved it uh back vestige number one today and thank you guys so much uh xenotype liam gray uh, Liam Gray, a devoted, dedicated comic skater, a fantastic voice for this movement, sensible, passionate, uh, and uh, and also very funny. His show is great. His show is called Life with Liam. Uh, and what is the name of your channel? It's the name of your company. Oh, shoot. What is Liam's channel? It's uh, Liam. Why couldn't it just be called Liam Gray, your channel? Does anybody Can anybody tell me in the chat so I can actually say it? Uh, what's Liam's channel called? uh conquest conquest comics conquest comics uh you know subscribe to that channel to watch liam's uh, youtube show uh liam gray is uh doing great forty six thousand five hundred and eighty one dollars from 492 backers we're getting close to 500 backers uh books in demand uh liam is a great voice for comics gate a great youtuber but also he's found this artist who's just 19 years old look at this guy uh, this kid's 19 years old and he's drawing like this uh, his name's Odie, O-D-Y. Uh, totally awesome uh, manga. I think this book is going to go places. Um, make sure to reserve your copy of it. Enjoy this story called uh, Xenotype Volume 1, Evolve or Die. Uh, over to me, uh, Cyberfrog. Let me see. Let's get this back to the main screen. Cyberfrog has moved uh, to six ninety one, six dollars $691,402. Uh, we are now, holy cow, uh, we are now about $5,600 away from becoming uh, the largest 
funded in one single run. Uh, comic book on Indiegogo of all time. We're going to beat Earthworm Jim uh, and its initial two-month run of $696,000. We're just trying to get to six ninety-seven, dollars uh, and we are, uh, we're almost there. $5,600 away from it. Uh, and look at this. We're getting really close to 6,000 backers. I love watching numbers change like this. Uh, the Executive Honeycomb Box, big seller, 1,634 of these sold out of 2,500. Uh, this is a subscription to the campaign, guys. Uh, buy this and don't worry about it. If you buy this, you're going to get every single product and uh, three three bonus books that nobody else is going to be able to get outside of the Honeycomb Box. That's the Wall Calendar. Uh, that's Ultimate Blood Honey Gold Foil Edition. Uh, and also the Heather Swain I Spit on Your Hive variant of Wrecked Planet. You're going to get all that stuff. Uh, and everything else stuffed into the Cyberfrog Executive Honeycomb box. Do not miss out on that. That is the single best way to experience Cyberfrog Rock Planet. You can keep all your uh, books in this. Let me just show you the box. This is what it looks like, guys. Uh, you're going to get this. It's got a magnetic seal on it. You open it up to some beautiful Cyberfrog and Salamandroid art. And all your books, 10 books total, I believe, are going to be stuffed into here uh, with all your trading cards and stickers. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure out a way to package your uh, your. Well, I'll just throw it in there. Your uh, beautiful keychain uh, will be in the box as well, uh, and uh, you can, after you're done reading all the books, put this on your shelf. Uh, I'm going to do a Cyberfrog Blood Honey box uh, so that you can keep all of from now on all of your Cyberfrog books on the shelf together in these beautiful protective store folios. Uh, and I thank you for that. Now, if you don't have the money for that, that's cool. Uh, this is uh, the other shipping container. Uh, this is the chicken fry shipping box. If you order two or more Cyberfrog books, uh, you are going to get your order shipped to you in this replica of a fast food takeout box from the restaurant, the fictional restaurant uh, that Heather Swain works at. She sells fried chicken or she makes fried chicken. Uh, chicken fry brings it home to Cyberfrog. And now you can bring home Cyberfrog Rec Planet to uh, your family. Uh, the postman will bring it to you in this box. Underneath here is a nice storage place where you can put your, uh, where all the Cyberfrog books are going to be uh, kept safely in transit to you. This is going to be a foam top layer. It's going to go over this that makes it look like there's actual fried chicken in uh, the box itself. That's two or more books. Order two or more books. Uh, they will be shipped to you in this chicken fried container. Uh, and, uh, you know, holy cow, it's going to be fun. All the stretch goals are met. You're going to get trading cards. You're going to get a lot of cool stuff. And thank you guys. Uh, for supporting this campaign the way that you have. Uh, this is so great. They said, they said, Ethan, you are not going to make $500,000 again like you did on Cyberfrog Blood Honey. That is correct. Uh, it looks like $700,000 to me right now. Uh, thank you guys a million times over. Uh, Cyberfrog Unforgettable Tales, uh, it's a chance for you to read the very rare, uh, very rare out of print Cyberfrog number one and number two from 1994 colored with new foil covers, uh, new lettering. Uh, these books, if you buy them individually on eBay, if you find them, they're like $500. They're unaffordable for most people. Uh, let's, make them let's make them affordable for you. Uh, here they are, $10, $10 for number two, one and two with brand new covers that are going to be shiny foil embossed. These images are going to be raised off of the surface. It's a great way to enjoy uh, the very first two appearances of Cyberfrog. And uh, thank goodness for Kyle Ritter, who was coloring these pages. These were these these used to be in black and white, uh, but Kyle is uh, coloring them, so they just look glorious right now. New lettering by Eric Weathers. You know, it's great. It's a great deal. So make sure to please back uh, Cyberfrog Unforgettable Tales for ten dollars. Uh, you know, maybe it's worth checking into. Uh, thank you guys. One hundred and sixty-seven thousand five hundred seventy-nine dollars uh, for Cyberfrog. Um. Oof, that was a that was an active. I like doing solo streams, you know. I like it. I have to talk a lot more, but it is uh, it is fun. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, I'm gonna let you go. It is now almost midnight. Uh, oh, let me read the rest of the super chats here that just came in. Uh, let's see. Uh, Craft seventy five says uh, those were great short explanations of comics gate and etc. I hope you keep up the stream and make clips of them. Keep it up, Ethan. I'll keep it up. Uh, Ryan Hall, thanks for $10. I negotiated terms with Doug T for a handy J to Moonlight Sonata on a, a bag of marshmallows. Uh, after he got the money, Doug got weird and started ducking me. Now you won't take my calls. Am I not? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but in any case, uh, love you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. Uh, we'll get back and do this again, too. Back all these books. All right. Adios, guys. <laughs>